Can I tell you about the life that is forevermore? The life that is forevermore is, is the life of Jesus. It's not the life of religion. It's not the life of, of ideology and not the life of philosophy. I'll tell you, when you step into the life of Jesus, it overcomes the world. You don't have so much problem with sin and temptation anymore. When you step into the life of Jesus, it's so glorious and so oh, oh, amazing that you don't thirst for the world anymore. When you step into the life of Jesus, a light of God's divine power and glory begins to shine. That those who sit in darkness are so desperate to see. It's painful to sit in darkness. People sit in darkness. They're unaware of his movings. They're unaware of his influences. They're more they're in darkness. All you can feel is the influences of the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life. In darkness, all you feel is the continual pull of everything that demon spirits would try to impose upon you and oppress you with. When you step into the light, you begin to hear, you begin to sense, you begin to feel huh? a glory that belongs only to the only begotten Son of God. A glory that belongs to Jesus Christ who came to show us all the fullness of that who He is, who Father is, the eternal God, this life that He has, which is life forevermore. God does not give you an eternal life to live out your own life, for there is no eternal life in your life or my life. Eternal life exists only in Christ Jesus. It's His life that is unending. It's God's life that is unending. It's Father's life that is unending. It's the Holy Spirit life that is unending. I pray tonight that your eyes would be open, that you would receive a spirit of wisdom and revelation. To come to know and understand how glorious this is. How wonderful this is. How beautiful these things are. That God has freely given to us. When he gave to us his only begotten son. When he provided for us the blood. The broken body. The poured out blood. So that we might step in through the door into the holies of holies. Christ Jesus his body became for us. Not only a sacrifice for sin, not only an offering for sin, but the doorway in. There is no way to the Father but by Jesus and Jesus alone. I listen as many people in these last days with their eyes of apostasy and greater deception and greater heresy try to redefine the faith. The reality of it is, is the faith is very simple to see and understand. The faith is Jesus. The faith is the miracle that he wrought for us through his blood to where that we could be born of the Spirit and become a new creation for nothing. Nothing matters to God in the respect of circumcision or uncircumcision. All that, is matter, all that matters to Father is a new creation. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. And I hope tonight that you're discerning enough to recognize that if I'm not prophesying, that I'm just declaring his word. And when I prophesy, you can prove that by the word too. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Ha. Thank you, Jesus. I am washed in the blood of the Lamb. I've been born again, born of the Spirit and the Word. We've been born again, given the Father's own heart and a new spirit from Him. We've been born again, none of this world. Born of the Father, brethren to Christ Jesus, companions of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ha 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 
Ah, ha, ha, hallelujah. I want you to just take a five-minute break and just praise God in your own, in your own style. Just praise God and begin to praise Him from the heart by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Just begin to worship Him. Hallelujah. 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 Ha ha. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ha ha. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. Oh, holy pasta, terri mani nishi paia lora. Cara mangela in la mamma ne. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, thank you, Lord Jesus. Cura mamma mamma ne, la musichina na 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 mande, ti 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 Hallelujah. Well, why don't you just be why don't you just be seated? Just stay right there where you're at right now. You know, I hear so many uh, of God's people talk, so many Christians talk, and they act like we got some kind of an Old Testament experience with God. They act like every once in a while the Holy Ghost comes on them, and then they got something from heaven. And then the rest of the time, they don't know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? And it just really isn't that way. Father has given us the privilege and the opportunity because of this wonderful miracle of salvation. He gave us the wonderful privilege and the opportunity to be con every day to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. That is something that we do with our will, that we choose to do, that we participate with God in, because he's left, he's left a choice to us. He's not going to make us walk in the Holy Ghost. He's not going to make us walk in his life. Father saw men in his trespasses and sin in the prison and under the power and dominion of death and sin, under the law of death and sin. And he's loved us so much that he spared not his own son, but offered him up for the sins of us all. So that we could be delivered out of that realm of hell. To be able to step over into a place of union with him. So that we can now receive freely all things also by him. <laughs> it's true. Now, I know I put a big paragraph in the middle of that verse of scripture in Romans 8.32. But it deserves a big paragraph in the middle of it. He who spared not his own son, but offered him up for the sins of us all. How shall he not also by him freely give us all things? The Lord's we're here to freely. We, we did, what happens is like we get so caught up in the circumstances and situations that are around us. We don't recognize that God has actually given to us his very own life. We, have, we can live God life, God's life every day. We can live the life of Jesus Christ every day. That's the will of the Father. He, he, the, the Christian experience in the Christian testimony and, and the faith is supposed to be I no longer live it's Christ Jesus that lives that's the testimony of the faith people want to have some other testimony but you know what you're never going to have the miracle of all that God has provided without faith and father supplies the faith his word declares to us those things which he's freely given to us but if we're not going to believe these things you know if we're going to believe something else if we're going to modify it I hear all the time people saying ah you know we all unrighteous. We all going to sin more or less every day. That is the Antichrist, anti Bible. That's not the Word of God. Well, for the very principles of the faith is we believe unto righteousness with the heart. Believing unto righteousness with the heart, we believe unto righteousness is just like with the heart, believing that God raised Jesus from the dead. The two are hooked up together. God has given to us 
his very own righteousness because he gave to us his very own life. He gave to us his very own life. He made us his temple. He purchased us. He purchased us. He redeemed us. And he gave us a guarantee. He gave a proof. He gave a witness that he purchased us. He gave us his very own spirit of holiness. The spirit of holiness that he has. The Holy Spirit. Ours. Woo! But you're going to have to believe these things. Because there's all kinds of reports. There's all kinds of lies. There are all kinds of various testimonies. But every day you can go to the Word of God. And you can read the Word of God. And Father can straighten you out and correct you. If you'll start in Genesis 1-1. And continually read Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21. Take you 90 days. Spend an hour a day. And every 90 days you start back at the beginning. Hallelujah. Uh, 30 days to read the New Testament with just a moderate amount of reading time. They would just read their little favorite verse of Scripture. <laughs> Pull a daily bread from the box, which is half a verse of Scripture. <laughs> that isn't seeking first the kingdom of God. That isn't walking in the way. That isn't allowing the word of God to come and have rule over us. I mean, we need to say to the Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, come and rule me. <laughs> because that's what you're saying when you say he's Lord. You're saying he's my ruler. <laughs> God expects that we live by the spirit of holiness, that we walk in the spirit of holiness. Father has given us the privilege to be continually filled with the spirit. But we do other things. And that's why, you, that's why you're unhappy. That's why you're, uh, you have the doubts and the pains and the sicknesses and the sorrows and all the stuff. There is an opportunity Father made it available to us through the blood of Jesus Christ. By the blood of Jesus Christ, we come into the, we come into the holies of holies, and we're actually supposed to be living there. It's not like, okay, well, just really nice visiting, and I'll see you later. I'm going to go back out here into the world and find something of interest. No, we captivated. Captivated. Woo! Hallelujah. I saw him. When I saw him, he captivated my attention. See, everybody wants to be like Joshua and Caleb, but I know what Joshua's look like. When they see the glory of the Lord, they never depart from the door of the tabernacle. They just captivate it. Whoa, look at that glory. Look at that beauty. Look at that splendor. You behold the glory long enough, and you'll command the moon and the sun to stand still in their place. Right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You'll find, yourself, you'll find yourself promoted in the kingdom of God because Father has purposed that you and I be the witnesses of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we be the witnesses of the goodness of heaven. That we be the witnesses of all these wonderful things that belong to his eternal life. His life. Eternal life is a synonym to the life of the Spirit. Eternal life is a synonym to the life of God. Eternal life is a synonym to the life of Christ. God came and put a wellspring on the inside of us. Which is a provision of the very life and glory of God. That will spring up on the inside of us. Continually providing us of, with all the things that belong to his own person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then it's more than just a wellspring. It's a river gushing out. The Lord says, I'll just come and take a drink. Somebody said, I want to take a drink. Start praising him. Just come and take a drink. He takes one swallow and multiplies it and put, turns it into a river. You talk about multiplication. Hallelujah. Oh, dear people, you don't have to wonder what does it look like when the Holy Ghost is allowed to have dominion over you. It's joy. It's love. It's peace. It's goodness. Wow. It's faith. I mean, you know, if you just lived all your life in goodness, you would have one beautiful, wonderful life. The Lord says to Moses, I'm going to cause my goodness to pass before you. I'm telling you, when we talk about goodness, we're talking about all his fullness because the uh, reality of it is is. Moses was asking to see the Lord. He said, Lord, let me see you like you are. I want, to, I want to behold you, you know. That's just what happens with encounters with God. Real encounters with God causes you want more. And, you know, I, somebody said, why do you like church? Because I love heaven. It's church is the closest thing I can get to heven right now. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, you know, I want to minister something to you tonight that's going to help you because there's so many things going on within the framework of this modern new 
I don't know what kind of movement that is within the church, but how do I, how do I continue to live in the world and still be right with God and justify my state? And there's all kinds of various different shades of that, but I want to convince you that you're in Christ Jesus. I want to convince you that Christ Jesus is in you. I want to convince you that the Holy Spirit is both in you and He's also with you. I want to convince you that Father has come to make His abode with you. I mean, come on, you start moving into that faith. You're going to begin to draw on the wealth of heaven and the riches of heaven. If you go to the bank, you may have a billion dollars in the bank, but if you can't produce your ID, you're not going to draw it out. And tell you, go home, get your ID, and come on back in here. I want you to get your ID tonight. I want you to get your identification so you can draw wealth. I want you to get your identification in Christ Jesus. I want you to get your identification in the things of the Spirit. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. You may say that you're, that, you know, you're God's best friend, but if you're not going to be willing to take hold of the faith, you know what? You don't please Him because He said so. He wants you to agree fully with Him, not in part. Amen. God and his, God's way is the only way that will work. The Word is your only lamp. You can't enlighten unto your path. You can't take God's Word and mix it with anything and be right. You can't. You can't take God's Word and mix it with Christian philosophy and be right. You're not going to get the results. I'm telling you right now, if you don't have the miracle results that are described in the Word of God, it's because the Word of God has been mixed with something in your life that is work that is literally working as it were a roadblock. And so, I mean, listen, when people start reading the Word of God, first and foremost, I just want to tell you, that is how the Holy Spirit can just, just, just slap you. You know, he can correct you. He can come and just cause the pages to jump, the, the words to jump up off the page and just convict you. But if you're just listening to preachers preach and you're listening to what your favorite, you know, Christian has to say, who knows what you're going to get. Um, but if you listen to the word of God, you're going to get so built up in the faith. No, no plague will come nigh your dwelling. You're going to get so built up in the faith, you've got a continual supply of the things that are from heaven. Hey, you, hey listen, I, I always walk in a word of knowledge. I'm always walking in discerning of spirits. I'm, I'm always walking in joy and peace because I'm always walking in the Holy Ghost. I'm always being filled. And what we want you to understand is the Lord didn't just do this for me. He said, oh, I'm gonna, I'll tell you what, we're going to just have a couple of special people on the earth that they're going to get continually filled. And they can continually be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And everybody else just got to look from afar. Every once, we'll give, every once in a while, we'll give them a little sprinkle of what it's like to be in the blessings of God. No. Father has poured out His Spirit upon all flesh. Father has made a way and opened up the door for every one of us to be able to step in to a relationship with Him that is so amazing. Where there is no condemnation here. There is, there is, no, there is no shame or sense of sin here. His blood has washed all the offense away. He's removed it as far as the east is from the west, and that's eternal. Did you know that? You know, all these people, they got this belief about how big the universe is, and they're going to, I was talking to a person from NASA the other day. I said, so when are you going to get to see the edge of the universe? He said, five years. About five years, we'll be able to see the edge. I said, I want you to hear, I want you to remember you heard it here first. When you, when you get there, it, it won't be there. When you, when you look, it won't be there. He said, what do you mean? I said, the universe, it, your measurement of the universe is based upon a false principle. It's based upon a false theory. The universe is a reflection of God's eternal glory. Hallelujah. And it says, as, as infinite in expanse as he himself is. And when he moves your sin as far as east is from the west, that's an eternal expanse. Amen. And he wants to bring you into a place where the former things are not remembered by you anymore. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, people, we're going to step over in the new heaven and the new earth after the thousand-year reign of Christ Jesus where he smashes everything. Praise God. He comes and rules with a rod of iron, smashes everything with a fuller soap and as a refiner's fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Smashes everything. Hallelujah. And then creates a new heaven and a new earth wherein will be only righteousness and the former things will not even be able to be remembered. They will not be able to, you won't even be able to imagine that there was ever a possibility that men could have been participating with sin and ungodliness. Where would be the place of such a wicked act? Where would be a place of such twisted thinking, of such death? Oh, I pray today that you will allow the life 
of Christ Jesus, the light of the gospel to shine fully in your heart, and you begin to apprehend these things for which you are also apprehended. Uh, I pray in the name of Jesus, you'll begin to seize, in other words, those things for which you are seized. Hallelujah. I pray in Jesus' name, you'll begin to walk it out in the Holy Ghost that all the rest of the stuff won't even matter. It won't even be real to you anymore. Anything that God says, all that you believe, what he declared, hallelujah, is those things that you lay hold of. You don't live based upon the circumstance and situation what's described by you around you. You live by the word of God and his word alone. It's a wonderful life. And then you get to be happy all the time. Amen. Amen. God, the life in Christ Jesus is a wonderful life. The rest of the life is dead. You, without Christ Jesus, you're dead while you live. So many people don't understand the difference between the law and what Paul said in Romans about the law and the faith that is in Christ Jesus simply because they don't, they never really come to realize that only through Jesus Christ can men be liberated from the sin and disobedience of Adam. They've just never realized that. It's like all of a sudden people find themselves in Romans hearing Paul talk about faith and somehow they've had, they got this gigantic mental block and it's a spiritual mental block. They don't realize that the faith is that we have been washed in the blood and that we've been born of the Spirit and we've been given a new heart and a new spirit and he's written his laws upon our heart and our mind so that we may do them and that like as he took Adam and he formed him from the fine dust that was the moment and day that Adam was created he never existed before that day so the eternal word who was is the last Adam who has always existed who is God eternal in the heavens great is the mystery of God and godliness God was manifested in the flesh he took us and in Christ Jesus he formed us and recreated us in his image after righteousness and true holiness and God says start thinking different he would just want to say be renewed in the spirit of your mind well how are you going to do that you need to start thinking different somebody said well to be renewed in the spirit of your mind you need to start reading the word yeah that's fine that's true but more than that, you need to start speaking the word, believing the word, speaking the word, and saying it, that, that what the word describes is who you are. Because you can read the Bible all day long, but if you don't believe it, nothing's going to profit you. It didn't profit Israel. It was not mixed with faith in those who heard it. Father said, this is what I got for you. Two people hear it. Maybe three. And one of them got so aggravated he couldn't go in. He got so, I know what it's like pastoring. Finally, Moses just like, you know, he just crossed the line. says, must I fetch, fetch water for you rebels? When the Lord said, just speak to the rock. Showing us how easy it is. You know how easy it is? Woo! You know how easy it is to get filled with the Spirit? Speak to the rock and the water comes out. Christ Jesus is that rock that followed them in the wilderness. Speak to the rock, water comes out. That water of the Holy Spirit, he's ready to give you a drink all the time. He's right there. That rock followed him in the wilderness. That rock's inside you. Think about it. It will be the cure to your temptation. It will be the cure to your aggravation. It will be the cure to your weakness. God says he empowers us. Be strong in the strength of the Lord, power of his might. He said, oh, my God's put a big responsibility on our shoulders. How are we going to do that? Oh, God. Oh, God. Then I may be. Strong. He did. The Lord said, be. Yeah. He said, do it. He said, be. He said, light be and light was. There was no resistance. He looks at you and me and he says, be. And we're going, oh, God, please help me. Oh, God, rent the heavens, come down. He don't need to rent the heavens. Heaven's already been rent. He's down here. Right. He's here. He's right here right now. Hallelujah. Well, oh, I'm with you always. Hallelujah. Even unto the end of the world. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Is here. God gave us the two most precious, glorious dimensions of Himself. That which was hidden in the bosom of the Father, the eternal Word was made flesh. Hallelujah. To, to bear our sins away so that we, being cut off from sin, might live under righteousness, by whose wound we're healed. But you've got to believe that. It's got to be a living faith. It's got to be something that's in your heart and in your mouth. If it's not in your heart and in your mouth, then the fire of the Word's not going to destroy all the doubt and all the forces of hell that are coming up against you to make sure that it's never a living reality. It's only a religious belief. And so 
It's up to you to choose. Are you going to come under the rule of the Word of God? Are you going to be who He says you are? Or are you going to be who you want to be? Are you going to be who you define yourself to be? Because if, you be, if you're going to be who you define yourself to be, you can never draw from the wealth and the riches of heaven that have been supplied to you. He supplied everything that we have need of so we are without excuse. He's giving us everything that pertains unto life and godliness who's called us to glory and virtue by Christ Jesus. Who has given unto us the divine nature. We have already escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Satan and his sin and his dominion hath no more power hold upon us. That's got to be in your mouth. It's got to be in your heart. It's got to be that which you believe. It's got, to be, it's got to be that which you are willing to be living, to be living, hallelujah, to be trusting. I mean, it's so easy to receive from heaven, hallelujah. It's so easy to be filled with the Spirit. <laughs> you ask the Lord for a drink. You say, Holy Spirit, come overwhelm me right now. And you begin, to, you begin to praise Him. Now, if you get down on your knees and you go, oh, God, oh, God, what's wrong with me? Oh, God, what's wrong with you? And you go through that whole doubt and unbelief prayer. Of course, nobody's going to say, oh, God. Well, you do say, oh, God, what's wrong with you? Many people bemoan their circumstance and complain that God should be doing more. Oh, God. <laughs> Why? You're never going to get anywhere that way. The Holy Ghost is going to be offering thanksgiving. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's going to be offering praise. He's going to be saying, thank you, Father God, for the things that you have done and the things that you are doing, the testimony of your word. Ah, I thank you, Father, that I might now live in perfect health, that I might now learn, live in every realm of the Holy Ghost, in, 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 in the wonderful realms of fellowship with you, in the wonderful realms of all the riches, that heaven, 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 woo, heaven. Oh, ha, hallelujah, heaven supplies. Amen. I want to deal with some, I want to deal with some of the most difficult scriptures in the book of Romans tonight with you. And um, so just to kind of give you a heads up, I, I, I'm going, I don't want you to turn there, but I'm going to be dealing tonight primarily with Romans 2.14, which sets the premise, then we'll go to Romans 3.20, and then we'll go to Romans 3.31. Might not go to Romans 3.31. I might save that for later. Who knows? I might go to that first. Romans 4.15, Romans 5.13, for those of you that are taking notes, because you know me, I get talking so fast, I just quote the scriptures and forget to tell you where the references are, so now you got them. And there's been things made of these verses of scripture that are just totally erroneous, totally erroneous. And people have said, oh, now that the law of Moses has been taken away, there is now no more sin. And that is just as, that is just, that is so wrong. There, because somehow people have forsaken the reality of what the law testified about con concerning the Lord Jesus Christ and concerning the state and condition of men. And... You know, Paul's dealing with the reality that there is nothing that can change your state of unrighteousness, your sta state in which sin and death has dominion over you, except for the power that is only found in the name of Jesus Christ, the Redeemer, the Savior, the most perfect man. God called three men perfect in the Old Testament. And the most perfect man that he identified in the Old Testament would have been under the dominion of sin and death forever had not Jesus come and purchased our, power, uh, purchased our redemption. And, and what God has done is he's not made it to where that now somehow we've got to, um, you know, go through this process of being deserving and being worthy and once we pass level one and level two, then all of a sudden we get to step into the new birth. 
He does it in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, so to speak. He does it instantaneously. We call upon the name of the Lord and we're born again. We have a radical union with God. We are crucified with Christ in an instant, in a moment, in a miracle of salvation, buried with him by baptism into his death. You're going to have to grab a hold of this because you might quote the scriptures and never become a living reality for you. It's never become something that you've actually activated within the framework of that which you fully and truly have embraced. We raised up together with him. This is the only true Christian creed we had, we raised up together we alive together and seated together with them in the heavenly realm now you want to have a christian creed that is just absolutely the testimony of what faith is that is the faith that is what god has done for us and people want to come along and say oh well you know now that the law has been removed uh, you know and when there's no law you know then there's no sin and you know, and Jesus has removed the law, so now there's no more sin, and it's not imputed anymore, and so you don't have to be concerned about that. Listen, that is ridiculous, because first and foremost, by that definition, Adam should have never been kicked out of the garden for disobedience. The world should have never been overthrown with a flood and every living soul except for the souls of eight men destroyed. Sodom and Gomorrah should have not been, uh, you know, radically destroyed by God. People, it's, it's, it, we've, got to, we've got to grab a hold of something that, that goes beyond just the framework of what we try to, you know, process intellectually. You know, you're never going to intellectually comprehend any of the things of God. So, you, you, you know, you've, in a Western society, you've been taught... How you, you know, you go to school, you memorize things, you read books, you gain knowledge, you, you know, you figure it all out and then you succeed. It's not going to work that way. It's you and I coming, a, grabbing a hold of this wonderful realm in the life of Christ Jesus. And suddenly we begin to see how this all uh, comes together. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I want you to open your Bibles with me. I, I just really truly believe people need to be taught the word of God. And the first thing I want to show you. So I want, to look, I want you to look with me in 1 John chapter 3, in verse 4. Look here. And I, you've got to always keep it in the context. Anytime you're talking about faith, that means that you've been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ and you've been born of the Spirit. You're a new creation. That's it. Galatians chapter 6, verse 15 says, Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision amounts to anything but a new creation. That's all. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new and all things are of God. This is the new creation. This is what, this needs to be our confession of our mouth and, and the way that we live. We, we need to grab a hold of the reality that we're born of the Spirit. We're the temple of the Holy Ghost. He lives on the inside of us. This needs to be the living reality of who we are, what we perceive ourselves to be. How are we going to live? How are we going to function? How are we going to operate? How are we going to think? God tells us to have our lifestyle in heaven. That's having our lifestyle in heaven. Are you listening to me? This is having our lifestyle in heaven. What happens? You got to watch out. You're going to run a risk trying to please God and have your lifestyle in the world. Or, it, or at least in the earth. Because the, Paul separates out the world from the earth. The world and the spirit of the world, he separates out from the earth. But then he ultimately, and he ultimately even comes down and brings it down to the reality of just those things in the earth, which are just the natural things like your food and your clothing. Jesus said, take no thought for, which everybody's constantly consumed with. You listening to me? Yeah. Paul said, set your affections on things above, not on things of this earth. <laughs> He's really hearkening back to the same message. You know, uh, those, who are, are, uh, those who are really dedicated in... Um, in Israel, the Haradim, they just dedicated to the things of God. They, they live very meager lives. Very, they live uh, to where that they don't need a lot of finances. They don't go get themselves in debt. So they only need to work three, four hours a day so they can devote more time to studying the Word. And all they're doing is just studying the Word. And they don't even know the reality of what I'm talking about. What we do is we pile up de debt to the heavens because we got all these material things Huh? You know, it, it's just like we were watching a little bit of the, uh, of the Super Bowl before we came. You know, I've always got the remote handy because as soon as the commercials come on, you know, I just flip it back over to the golf channel or something, you know. But at any rate, what you see is they've always got, they've always got some lustful thing, some lascivious thing centered around like car advertisement and whatnot. 
Because it's just all in, it's just all embedded in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. I'm not saying that the Lord doesn't want to bless you. I'm just saying he's not going to bless you so that your whole life is a slave to an earthly system. And then ultimately you begin and become entangled in the world. And now it's hard for people to find an hour to spend in the word of God a day. And I, I have been pastoring for 33 years. I've been walking with the Lord most of my life. My daddy's a preacher, granddaddy, great-grandpa, great-great-grandpa, great-great-great-grandpa. Just, I mean, that's just who we are. We just did. I mean, you know, I, it's just, that's just our family. The bottom line of it is my, my sons are preachers and Anna's well on her way, my granddaughter. And it's just that's the way it's going to be. Hallelujah. And I've watched people don't, people say they spend an hour a day in the Word. They don't. Maybe once or twice a week, three or four times maybe, but every day consistently in the Word of God. I oh, went to church today, I didn't need to get in the Word. Yeah, you need to get in the Word. Well, it was Super Bowl Sunday, we needed to get into the football game. Okay. Nothing wrong with getting into the football game a little bit. Don't get too carried away with it. Mm -hmm. Huh? Because God's not really interested in football. He doesn't care who wins. People on their knees praying, oh God, my team. He's not, you know, this is ridiculous. That's asking a miss. That's asking fantastical stuff, meaningless, senseless stuff. Father says you have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you ask things, you ask for things that are valueless. They're amiss. They're fantasies. Father wants us to get over into a realm of walking with him where we're just desiring in every way to glorify him in our body and our spirits. Where we're willing to walk in the perfect law of liberty. I want you to know you're under a law of liberty right now. I want you to know you're under the law, spiritual law of life. The spiritual law, the law of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus has made you free from the law of sin and death. Praise God. And the only thing that could make you free from the law of sin and death was the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. His, his, uh, his work of purigation. Understand, atonement, that word was a, is a word created out of the English system trying to grapple with ancient Hebrew language. It is, it is it's clear now. From ancient Eucharist and Akkadian, which are, which are uh, kinsman languages to the Hebrew, that anytime you use the word kipper, it means to purigate. It means it's what you use for detergents, the strongest detergents to take out the roughest stains. The purigation. He's the purigation for our sin. He's not the covering for our sin. He's the purigation. He wasn't even a covering in the Old Testament. That's, once again, a misunderstanding of the word kipper. It's a wrong association of the word kipper with things that should have never, never, should have never even been associated with. And I stand in the company of, of a great company of linguists, biblical linguists, and I'm just telling you, I just want you to hear this stuff tonight. I want you to be totally free. I want you to get so set free that you're free. I want you to be so liberated by what Christ Jesus did for you, you're no longer in bondage anymore. Not in your thinking anymore. Hey, listen, God's created you in righteousness and true holiness, but you've got to be thinking different. You've got to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And be not conformed to this world, but be transfigured. How? By thinking different. By thinking different. You know, in, in, in my, in just, in, 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 in translating that phrase in the Greek language, I would just translate, I wouldn't translate it, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Because it's too abstract. It's more concrete. Start thinking different about yourself. The act of living, that which, that which is, you know, uh, the spirit of your mind. It's that which governs your thoughts. People have oppressive thoughts. Let me just take it from, uh, let me take it from a negative side, from a spiritual darkness side. Because they're in darkness, they've got this cloud of thoughts constantly imposing upon themselves. Maybe it's some kind of addiction, huh? Maybe it's some kind of evil. Maybe it's some kind of unforgiveness. And it just constantly, it's just there as oppressing their thoughts. They can't get away from it. They go to bed at night and they see visions and pictures of that which oppresses them. It's constantly on them. But there is a, there's a better way to live. And now is to have not an oppressive thought, but a glorious thought. And it's, it's now not to be oppressed with the powers of darkness, but be governed by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Governed by the Spirit of grace. I mean, governed, ruled over by the Spirit of the Lord. Governed, ruled over by the Word of God. Yes. My goodness, if all the Word of God you're going to get is on Sunday morning, that's not even, that's not, you know, survival rations. That, that's torture. You're going to die. To feed somebody one time a week, they're going to die. 
a preacher said to me early on, he wasn't, you know, of course it wasn't my dad because my dad's a preacher and, and I wouldn't want anybody to think that my dad told me this. But early on in ministry, <laughs> preacher told me, he said, he said, uh, Pastor Mark, you're going to have to realize you're going to have to make that sermon on Sunday morning powerful and rich. Because for most people, it's the only word of God they're going to get. I stood there and I looked at him and I said, nonsense. He said, what do you mean? I said, I'm not participating with that. He said, what do you mean? I said, I'll make people do what's right. Or I'll expose them for being wrong. Huh? Because God made me a pastor, a shepherd over his house. He told me to show and make a distinction between what's right and wrong. What's just, what's righteous, and what's unrighteous. What's good and holy, and that which is unclean. You think I'm going to stand back and pretend I don't notice? Nonsense. I'm going to rebuke you. I'm going to correct you. Somebody said, yeah, and that's exactly why your church is so small. You know, because big is right. Did you know that? Big is right. Oh, yeah, big is right. Sure it is. That, that, it is not in the Bible, baby. You're right, baby. It's not there. It's not there. But in the mind of men, it is. In the mind of men, it is. In the mind of men, big is right. Wow, God is moving. Well, so the Mormons are right because it's big. Jehovah's Witness is right. Islam is right. I could go on down the list. Oh, no, you're comparing apples to oranges. No, we still with the apples. No, the reality of it is, is people don't want to be told, you must change. You must repent. You must bring forth fruits that is, that is proof of your repentance. You come under the rule. Oh, well, I'm going to come under the rule of God, but I'm not coming under the rule of the church. You're a rebel. You're rebellious. You're not of the household of faith. They go out from among us that they may be manifest that they're not of us. Oh, that's some pretty harsh stuff. Well, John's the one who said that. I'm just repeating him. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, and that's the context is right now. I'm going to come under the rule. Oh, well, how can you say that men uh, are, could be hooked up with that rule? It's not about men. It's not a men program. We've not been anointed by men, but we're anointed by God. And Father put in his church his holy governorship, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. And without them, you will not be perfected according to the word of God. Eh? Oh, yeah. We live in this independent, rebellious age. It says, I don't need nobody. It's mono, e mono, me and God. Listen. Father set up the body of Christ, and it's a wonderful thing. We want to do it his way. We want to embrace what he said. We want to understand what he said in the context of what she said it. We want to be a part of those things which he instituted and he set up. Hallelujah. I like, I like apostles, prophets, fans, pastors, and teachers. I like the being perfected part. I, I, that's the maturing, the growing. I like the being built up. I like the wonderful things of the work of the ministry because it's going to result in coming into the fullness of the measure, the maturity, the ministry of Jesus. It's, being, it's, it's going to result in growing up into him in all things. <laughs> Hallelujah. Even Christ Jesus, the head. Isn't that powerful? Uh, you guys are looking shocked. Don't give me no little sour amen. Just be rather be quiet. You should say, wow, it's true. It's powerful. That is amazing. Because when you think about it, as I was getting ready to say a few minutes ago, when you think about 1 John chapter 3, it says, Oh, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Nobody been called the son of God since Adam, except for angels. And Adam was removed from that place. But then Christ Jesus came, the last Adam. Hallelujah. The last Adam came for the sole purpose of now being the one who would redeem us and deliver us from the sin and the transgression of Adam that brought us into the bondage of sin and death. Oh, praise the name of the Lord, okay? Oh, what, oh, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. As many as believed, as those who would receive that which he is, has given. And anyone who would believe on him and receive that which he's given, he gave them the authority to be sons. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And though it does not yet appear what we should be, we know that we, when we see him, we will see him as he is. For we shall be like him. That's almost unutterable. I mean, that's a mouthful. I mean, if you, the, the, you write a thesis on that, part B, and of a, 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 a verse, a verse 2, 
First John chapter 3, verse 2. And it's like, ooh, what has he done for us? See, we don't exist outside of Jesus. <laughs> we live in him. And in him we move and have our being. And he lives in us. <laughs> he walks in us. He's no longer taking me by the hand. Oh, I just wish God would come take me by the hand and lead me around so I know he's here. Oh, God, where are you? Oh, God. He's living on the inside of us. He's walking in, in the midst of our being. He, he's moving uh, in the midst of our being, touching through our hands and walking, as it were, with our feet. Hallelujah. I'll be in them, says the Lord. I dwell in them. I'll be their God. They'll be my people. Of course, you know I, what I'm referring to. I'm referring to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, that great chapter. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Of who we now are in Christ Jesus as the temple of the Holy Ghost. Those who are called to come out from among them, be separate, touch not the unclean, saith the Lord, and I shall receive you. And I'll be a God unto you, and you'll be my sons and my daughters. I'll be a father unto you, be my sons, and you'll be my daughters. Huh? Uh huh? Therefore, let us, let us, what? Let us cleanse ourselves for the filthiness of the flesh, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Now let me jump back to 1 John 4. That was 2 Corinthians 7, 1, right? You guys all know this because the word of God abides in you. You young men, you strong, and the word of God abides in you, and that's the means by which you overcome the wicked one or you defeat him at every point because the word is in you. Somebody said, I, I can't memorize like that. I'm telling you right now, the word of knowledge works best off of the word of God. You listen to me. I, I was back in the day. My, my, my grandfather, my grandfather was a Baptist preacher who was baptized in the Holy Ghost. And any time an ambulance went by, he chased it down to get it there before it got to the hospital so he could bring the cure before the doctor got even a chance to look. Okay? Listen, I'm just, I, want, I want you to understand. We come from the Pentecostal movement. I'm telling you, we're talking about the genuine, real Pentecostal movement. Listen, uh, Father, what Father has done for us. The, the exceeding greatness of his love. I, we just keep, we got, a, we got a, a drain going on. People just keep leaving. Well, you know what? The word of God's going to sort things out. Try to just, the rest of you, just buckle your seat in the, buckle yourself into the chair because it's going to get more intense from here on out. I'm just, this is the preliminaries. We're just opening up, the, we're just beginning to open things up here. Dear, dear, dear people. Dear people, Father has, given to, Father has given to us a wonderful place in Him that we can't even begin to imagine. All we've got to do is just start participating with an unlimited grace and unlimited authority that has been provided for us in Him. Right now, we, right now we're co-inheritors. Right now we're heirs of God. Now, think about it. When the Holy Ghost is in you, when you've been born of the Spirit, okay? When you've been made a new creation, okay? When you had the word of God written upon your heart and upon your mind, huh? When you've got a new heart and a new spirit, and he's put his spirit on the inside of you, huh? When you're filled with the spirit, even even baptized in the Holy Ghost, how much law do you need to tell you what's right? How much law do you need to tell you what's right and motivate you to what's right and what's wrong? Huh? You don't need any. You don't need any. You don't need any law other than the spirit. The law of the spirit of life. That's the only law you need. It's the law and the governorship of the word of God. It's the law. You don't need a mosaic law. And a lot of this is what Paul is dealing with in Romans. But I want to go back first quickly. First, I want to go back real quickly to 1 John chapter 4, or chapter 3 rather. And I want to pick up verse 3. Everyone who has this hope purifies himself even as he's pure. There's a connection with the grace that God has brought to us and a responsibility to walk it out in obedience. But it's a responsibility that we now have by the governorship and the rulership of the Holy Ghost over our life and the Word of God over our life. And He's able, He's willing to do it. He's, he's here to fill us up and strengthen us, to be able to be successful in everything that He's pur purposed us to do. All we've got to do is come to rely upon Him. I'm still trying to remember what I was going to tell you with, about my, my great-grandfather. I'm, st I'm st still stumbling. Well, I'll get back to it. H hold, huh? Pardon? Yeah. But at any rate, I, I, I still don't remember. I'll come back to it in just a minute. Oh, that's right. I was going to tell you about the word of knowledge, quoting the word and the word of knowledge. All the old-timers back in that day, they, when they gave you the word of knowledge, they gave it to you with the word of God. My family grew up. My mother was closest friends with a woman named Finette Dake, whose father was Finest Jennings Dake. And so they, he's been part of our family. And 
and, and the community of the people that we've hung around all of our lives. And God gave him a word of knowledge. He never, I was, I was talking about not memor. He was saying they can't have a problem memorizing verses of scripture. That's what I was talking about. And I started seeing people walking out and I got all, what did, why? Are you leaving now? I haven't even got to the good part yet. But at any rate, and you, you can understand that Father will bring these things into your remembrance by the Holy Ghost. Just start reading the word. And, you know, if you would ask Dake before he had died, how much scripture had you memorized? He had told you just a couple of verses of scripture like John three sixteen. But you ask him on any subject and a gift would kick in. And that gift would cause them to begin to quote verses of scripture by the word of knowledge. And so all the old time prophets back in my grandfather's day, what they would do is that there was going to be a word of knowledge. All they do is come to you and they start quoting verses of scripture, start declaring to you the word of God, the things that God said in his word. And then, and then there may be a, a, an opportunity to say more specific details about your life. But that's where you want to practice the word of knowledge anyways. That's where the word of knowledge, that's what the word of knowledge is all about. In fact, the word of knowledge is a very, you know, I don't want to get off on this. You know me, I'll get off on every little subject I, I touch on. The word of knowledge is a, is a very um, abstract phrase in the Bible. It's actually the knowledge of the Lord or the knowledge of God. And we understand the knowledge of the Lord or the knowledge of God. What is that? That's the word of God. That's the unveiling of who he is and what he wants of us and what he's, what he's purposed us to do. Hallelujah. And that's the way the old timers believed, and that's the way I believe it too, because they, they walk a whole lot closer to God than people do in this modern day. I mean, come on, it's just the way it is. Huh? Yeah. People, I, I was all excited when people want to do healing rooms. They're going to do healing rooms. Oh, praise God. You guys are going to do healing rooms. You guys are going to get connected with John G. Lake. Well, praise God. I hope they'll start believing what John G. Lake believed, because he had a radical doctrine of the new birth, the new man. 100% genuine kingdom of God, spirit, soul, and body. I mean, whoo. I mean, the doctrine of John G. Lake. John G. Lake's walk in the anointing and miracles aren't going to work without his commitment to the same kind of radical sold out to God. I'm his Holy Ghost temple filled with him from the, you know, spirit, soul, and body from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet sold out to God for me to live as Christ. That's John G. Lake. And, and what happened, and of course, in what happened with his ministry in Africa right now in South Africa especially in South Africa the apostolic faith movement and of course that comes back from Azusa Street because that's the apostolic faith church and I know there's many different expressions of apostolic faith movement now but that was the apostolic faith movement and the apostolic faith movement still in Africa and my goodness if you call for a conference or a gathering of that movement it is one glorious gathering I mean, you're going to have hundreds of thousands of people there who ha have just sold out to a realm of the reality of being continually filled with the Spirit, of living days of heaven upon the earth, of having your conversation or your lifestyle in heaven, having your citizenship in heaven, having, having be, be, being in this heavenly realm. Oh, now, now you can begin to understand that this is the faith. This is the faith. Why would we ever want to trust in the law, which all the law could do is point out that we were still under the bondage of sin and death. That's all Paul's doing. So I'm going to go ahead and finish reading this verse of Scripture. I'm trying to set you up. I know I'm hitting you with a lot of stuff, but just keep coming back. You'll get it. Okay, just keep coming back. I know when I preach, I don't have three points. I have 30. Okay, I don't know how to preach with 30 points. They tried to train me. And there's so many points. So, but at any rate, he that hath this hope purifieth himself even as he's pure. Huh? Therefore, brethren, let us cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of the flesh, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. See how those are matched up? Huh? Somebody said, oh, you mean, have you begun in the Spirit now to be made perfect by your own human ability? No, you've begun in the Holy Ghost, been born of the Spirit, now to be perfected by the Holy Spirit. But it's talking about a consecration. It's talking about being willing to stay in this realm which, for which God has set us apart for. Somebody says, what does sanctification mean? Sanctification is real easy. Sanctification is our willingness to live the life of Christ Jesus by the Holy Ghost. Let me tell it to you again. Sanctification is our willingness to live the life of Christ Jesus by the Holy Ghost. Well, should I say it? again say is that a process that's something you're born into man that's something you're given it's a gift of God's given to you somebody said sanctification is a process no it's not it's an act of God's divine grace that sets us apart into himself by the miracle of salvation the only thing that is a process is you and me growing you born once you grow every day we're growing you're growing hallelujah you're growing hallelujah 
Paul said you're either going to grow into the fullness of the measure of the maturity of the ministry of Jesus or you're going to be like a little child tossed to and fro by all the tricks of men. Huh? Constantly being up and down, kicked around, looking like most Christians that come to church with a big gigantic frown. Huh? Father has commanded you and I, he's empowered you and I to rejoice with joy and speak and full of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's commanded us, empowered us to rejoice evermore. He's highest high. He's given us the Holy Ghost that has, it, it, that has given to us the very life of Jesus Christ uh, who has given the joy above all his, giving joy, the oil of gladness, the oil of joy above all, all everyone. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, I just don't know how to be happy. It's a force of your will. Ha, 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 ha. You can be happy right now. You can begin to think about something good. Somebody said, I don't have anything good to think about. Think about Jesus. <laughs> just begin to tell him, Lord Jesus, I love you so much. I love you. So I thank you that you love me. Something's going to start happening. <laughs> if you say that in truth, you know, something's going to start happening to you. <laughs> it's true. If we just begin to take the Word of God and the very principles, the basics of reality, Lord, lead me not into temptation. Don't allow me to be led into temptation because God does not tempt any man with evil, neither can he be tempted. So you must balance that with the understanding of lead me not into temptation. In other words, don't allow me to be led into temptation, which is an equivalent way to translate that verse of Scripture. Okay? But deliver me from evil. My goodness, I'll tell you right now, when next time you get in the midst of some kind of a temptation and problem and issue, just begin to worship him. Begin to praise him. Give, begin to thank him for his goodness. Allow God the Holy Ghost to fill you. Begin yeah. to take a drink and a water supply of heaven. Begin to bust loose in your soul. You'll begin to have a Holy Ghost shout. Is you supposed to have a Holy Ghost shout just when you get to church? You're supposed to have a Holy Ghost shout going on all the time. Come on. When is God's people going to step into this instead of just taking notes? When, when is it going to become something that is of the heart instead of the intellect? How, when is it going to become something, something of relationship? It's a wonderful thing when you move past religion and you move into relationship where you start asking the Holy Ghost for something and He immediately responds and you get the supply of it. That's a relationship. That's a dialogue. That's an interaction. Hallelujah. 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 You start, you start, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, you start giving yourself over to God. You start yielding yourself to Him. You start relying upon Him. You start practicing being filled with the Spirit. You start practicing putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's going to get stronger and stronger. And the manifest presence of God will grow more and more in your life. It will knock you off your feet. Oh, come on. It will knock you off your feet. I'm telling you, we don't we don't just we don't just get we don't just pass out in the in the in the in the meetings. We don't just faint in the meetings over the glory of God. That's falling out in the spirit to me. You can't stand anymore. You get knocked out. We, we, it happens at home. When I used to work in biotech, one morning I walked in, found Brad knocked out on the floor. <laughs> totally knocked out in the Holy Ghost on the floor. He wasn't in the lab. He was actually in the cafeteria. <laughs> he was a sign and wonder. He said, what's wrong with Brad? Oh, he was in a Holy Ghost meeting last night. <laughs> he probably hasn't slept all night. <laughs> Hallelujah. I saw him sitting in his car staring at his window about 2 o'clock in the morning at church parking lot. <laughs> Encounters with God is a wonderful thing. A dear friend of mine who God has used in such an amazing way throughout the world in signs and wonders and miracles. He, along with so many other people, have told me, it's the movings of God that got me through the hard times. It was glorious, manifest presence that got me through the hard times. It was a touch from heaven. I remember one preacher was telling me about, he, they, you know, he, they're doing a big crusade and, and, uh, he told them for 20 nights, put a rail on the steps. And they never did. And he came off of it, was slippery, and he landed right on his head. And he hit the ground and mud everywhere. It was at the end of the meeting. And he was not in a good state. He was upset. He was looking for those folks that were supposed to put that rail on him because he was going to smack them. Huh? <laughs> And he's, he's going looking, he's, he, in the heat of his spirit, he's going to look, where are they? I'm smacking them. 
And as, as he's walking, they bring a blind girl in front of him. Her eyes were just going all over the place. Said, Pastor, please pray. And he just, in the heat of his spirit, said, in Jesus' name. I was going to go look <laughs> for the person to smack him. The, the, the girl, immediately, her eyes she, were healed. She, her eyes were open. Huh? You know, I said to my dear friend when he was telling me about it, I said, well, you know, the one thing about it, my dear brother, is this testimony that you don't live out of yourself. You live out of the realms of the spirit. You deny the self. It, you didn't move in the realms of self as to govern whether or not you were able now to pray for this blind girl. Huh? It's all about Jesus. Oh, dear people, God's called you and me to deny ourselves on a daily basis. I don't, I, my experience is that I found most people don't even know, can't even recognize the self. You can recognize other people, but you can't recognize you. You're a foreigner to you. To recognize yourself. The things that you're supposed to die. To ultimately come to a living relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And where you ask the question, Pastor, what does it mean to deny yourself on a daily basis? What does that look like? I tell you, every time you're sad, sorry, and disappointed, that's something of you, not of the Holy Ghost. Deny it. Most things that people say are demon spirits is nothing but you, you, and only you. Just to get all three of you. And all you need to do is say, I'm not moving there. I'm not going with that. I'm not listening to that. I'm not having that. I'm not giving my members over to unrighteousness. I'm not giving my members over to something that is a false testimony of the life of Jesus. There's nothing worse than a person who bears false, false witness. Especially bearing false witness against the resurrection. And you and I are living epistles, at least we're supposed to be. And the God told us very clearly, those that were around him for th over three years, he said, you can't be witnesses unto me and unto my resurrection until you're baptized in the Holy Ghost. Huh? And then people want to make it a religious one-day experience. It is continual. Hallelujah. It is continual. Hallelujah. It's continual. Hallelujah. And then there we find ourselves living in that consecration where we won't allow, we will not allow any of these unholy things in our life. If we fall, if we slip, we cry out to God, Oh God, forgive me. Lord Jesus, cleanse me in your blood. We, 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 we sound like a man who, who's, who's fallen off of a cliff, crying out, God, save me. I'm about to fall into hell. And then we ask God the Holy Ghost to empower us, to strengthen us, never to do it again. To have an ideology that you're going to sin more or less every day is to giving yourself over to an antichrist spirit that will harden your heart against the conviction of the Holy Ghost. And so therefore, you will lie in which all who lie will have their part in the lake of fire. And because your heart is hardened through the deceitfulness of sin and through a wrong belief system, you will not repent. Thus, you will not be cleansed from the unrighteousness and you'll die in your sin. Because sin is just as powerful as it ever has been. Now listen to the next verse of Scripture because this is the potency of it. And I'm trying to give this verse of Scripture to set you up for what I want to say. The rest what I want to say. He that sins activates the law. He that sins transgresses the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Father delivered us. We freed from the dominion of sin. We freed from sin. Hallelujah. People need to get the faith of Romans chapter 6. Hallelujah. Sin shall have no more power, rule, or dominion over you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to that. That's glorious. Woo! I mean, that's good. Devil almost smash you. I mean, the first time that, you know, I, I, I was with Carlos and I understood what he was saying. He's like, Satan, you listen to me. I smash you. I destroy you. I strip you of all your power. You take your filthy, nasty hands off the people of God. And he had various different things of that. Get it, Carlos. Huh? And just, and, and watch what God did. He delivered. He delivered whole nations. So that even the Baptist Theological Seminary of Dallas Fort Worth said that he was the most successful evangelist of the 20th century. And for them to say that, that puts him above Billy. Huh? Because he was effective. He knew who he was. And he knew he could destroy Satan every, at every point. Because he recognized that Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. And that Jesus was in him. Oh, when we take a hold of our identity. 
when we begin to know the living faith, when we begin to inter interact in this relate dimension of the relationship, when we now no longer are willing to have our life in this world, no longer willing to have an earthly existence, but now to have our citizenship in heaven, and now to walk in a heavenly manner, after a heavenly dimension, by heavenly power, through the working and operation of this wonderful, ooh, brasata, unspeakable gift. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't, don't, don't get, don't get, don't get imprisoned by the, by the cares of this world, by the cares of this, this existence. Don't get imprisoned by religion. Then these things become very simple for you. I want to jump really quickly. I want to go over to uh, I set up another establishment of law, okay? In Romans chapter 2, verse 14. I want you to get this. Okay? Say, say, sin is the, say, say, how many of you understand that John and Paul were speaking from the same source? <laughs> that the Spirit of the Lord that spoke out of John totally agreed with the Spirit of the Lord that spoke out of Paul. It, they weren't two different perspectives of Christianity. Do you understand that? Okay, good. So sin is the transgression of the law even in the New Covenant. Huh? Sin is the transgression of the law even in the New Covenant. It's very important. Look with me quickly in Romans chapter 2. Hallelujah. Ki I'm going to ask you tonight, do you need law? Do you need law to walk with God? Or do you have the Holy Ghost? Are you, uh, yeah, listen, I'm telling you right now, if you're walking in the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus, you're free from the law of sin and death. You walking in the spirit is far more effective at dealing with everything that would come at you in the realms of temptation because it has no, because of what Jesus did for you in the faith, sin has no more dominion over you. You know, I could preach about, you know what? If you die in your sins, the smoke of your torment is going to ascend up before his throne forever and ever and scare people into salvation. Well, it's not really scaring them into salvation. It's scaring them up to the altar. God, the Holy Ghost, wanted to begin to deal with you and show you a contrast between death and life so that you'll choose life and want to live. So look with me quickly here in Romans chapter 2. Hallelujah. Can you, can you find yourself walking in the lust of the flesh or the lust of the eye and the pride of life, walking in the spirit? Let me say this. Can you find yourself, let me say it again because half the people didn't even hear me. Can you find yourself walking the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, walking in the Spirit? No, no you can't. Is, uh, is walking in the Spirit something that you're allowed to do on Sunday mornings, Sunday nights, and Wednesdays sometimes? Does God want to raise you up to make you a faithful, reliable light, or are you going to be a flickering one? We don't know if you're going to work or not. <laughs> when you go home tonight, flip, flip on your switch, and the light doesn't come on and you're in the dark, you know what you're going to do? You're going to fix that thing. Because that don't work. That's not reliable. Christians want to live their life like that. Oh, we don't know if we're on or not tonight, but go ahead and just, you know, count on us. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? There's something going on here that's far bigger than whether or not you're on or off. This is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the place that signs wonders and miracles, gifts of the Spirit. The dimensions of heaven are supposed to be being revealed, and it's only going to happen through faithful people committed to walking in the things of the Holy Ghost. I, I know that the greatest dimension and proof of salvation is the power to overcome sin. Not to work miracles. Praise God for the privilege of working miracles. Praise God for the privilege of the gifts of healing. But that's not the proof. That's not the proof of the born again nature. Be the power to overcome sin is. If you overcome even as I overcame, you will sit down with me in my throne even as I sat down with my father in his throne. That's what the Lord says. Hallelujah. 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 This is, the, this is the faith that overcomes the world. Amen. This is the power that overcomes the world. Hallelujah. Faith in who Christ Jesus is and what he, what, what he has done. The reality of what he, who he is and what he's done cannot be set apart from the fact that you've been made a new creation and that he lives and abides in you. Because everybody wants to make it existential. They want to put God somewhere far, far away, and now they're here. And then they want salvation to be some positional thing. It's not based upon experience. To be born again and filled with the Holy Ghost is an experience. Amen. 
God says, as surely as I live, this whole earth will be filled with my glory. So he poured out his spirit upon all flesh so that a river could come out of your belly and it go and flow into the rivers, into the rivers of the spirit of God that will then empty into the ocean of his great love that will cover the earth as the water covers the sea. Amen. Amen. So get with the program. I'm going to see some river here. That's it. Huh? And so my God, you don't have a river? Then you need to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. I don't care how much you yabba dabba do. Yeah, huh? I mean, the yabba dabba do doesn't going to produce a river. Will. will produce a river. It's a part of the river that always exceeds, always excels. It will always excel. It will always excel in the joy. It will always excel in the manifestation of God. It will always excel in the prophecy. It will always excel in the miracles. It got, why? Because that's what the Holy Ghost is doing. And why is he doing it? Because he's revealing the life and person of Jesus Christ to you and me. And you and I have to be willing to participate if we want to just stu be stuck in the rut of our own misery and whatever we've justified. You know what self-righteousness is? It's to self-justify. People self-justify, well, I'm this way because my grandfather was this way or I've got this certain problem and uh, everybody agrees that it's a real genuine problem. <laughs> Self-justification, man. You need to be conformed to the image of the Son. When there is a heart and a will to be conformed, to have what God, what, to have what God demands. What God demands, He also supplies. Yes. To have what God demands means I'm going to participate with it. If I don't participate with the, act, with the conscious action of my life, with the, with the statements of my mouth, with the declarations of the words coming out of my mouth, I mean, you need to start prophesying over yourself and start prophesying the Word of God. And it needs to come out of your mouth on the level of you declaring who you are in Christ Jesus, who God has made you to be, what you look like, what you're going to do, what you're going to have, and you refuse everything else because it's all a big damnable lie. He that believes a lie shall be damned at various different levels. I'm not going to self-justify. He's given me the righteousness of God. There's a righteousness which is by the law. But it was not a, it was, it was, it was a righteousness that was of works, as it were. It's not the righteousness of God. A righteousness of God is something that comes by the new birth. Righteousness of God comes when Christ Jesus is born on the inside of you. Christ is formed in your heart by the Holy Ghost. When the righteousness of God is formed on the, on your heart, in your heart by the Holy Ghost, then the law, the spirit of life, rules you, governs you. The word of God rules you, governs you. He rules your heart and mind. Wow. Christ Jesus, the eternal word, rules you. I say to the Lord, Lord Jesus, come rule me with a rod of iron and smash all my own ideas. Smash everything that's contrary to your word. I'm lay hold of the things that you provided. I'm lay hold of the things that causes my life to, to be a, a, a witness of, of what you gave us when you made us a new creation and glorify you in my body as well as in my spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Now I want you to go look at Romans 2.14. It takes me a while to get to any verse of scripture. I'm sorry. I'm no, I'm not. See, Paul sets this thing up and says, not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law should be justified. Similar to what Jesus said, that the hearers, uh, hearers only are not justified, but those who do his word. They, they are justified. So ultimately, here Paul's going to set something up that's important. To remember, he says, for when the Gentiles, or really it's when the nations, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these then having not the law, are a law unto themselves. So, next verse. Which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness in their thoughts, the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. Understand that when Paul's going to talk about the law, he's gonna, there, there's going to be reference to the law of God. There's going to be reference to the law of Moses. But there is an establishment of law in every administration of man. And that's provable. 
Because I want you to go look here. At the first, first, I want you to go look at a couple. I'm going to get you to look at two hard verses of Scripture with me real quickly. Romans 5.13. To start with. Romans 5.13. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin was not imputed when there is no law. Let me read it again to you. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Now, you, some of you want to take this to believe that somehow God had executed no judgment or responsibility for breaking any of his laws of life before the law of Moses came into existence. Well, that's ridiculous, yeah. isn't it? Because Adam broke a law, disobeyed, and he suffered the consequences of death for it. Once again, the flood of Noah, Sodom and Gomorrah, the time of the Amorites. We could go through so many examples. So you've got to understand more perfectly what Paul is, is, is referring to here. He's talking to those who are under the law that believe that they could be somehow justified by the law. And he's saying to them, listen to me. Under the law, all the law is going to do, the law is powerless to change your heart. The law is powerless to remove the dominion of sin and death. The law is powerless to remove the disobedience and the transgression of Adam from off of you. All the law is going to do, as long as it exists, wherever it exists, is going to tell you that you're wrong. The law is there for those who are wrong. The law is not there for those who are right. Does that make sense? Let's go look at another, and, and, and we'll hopefully make this more clear as I go along here. Romans 4. Look at Romans 4, 15. Paul says, because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Once again, he's writing to those people who want to trust in the law for righteousness, who are refusing the reality, to refuse and to acknowledge the reality that there is a problem, there is a spiritual condition that the law can never remedy. There's a spiritual condition that that they have inherited that has the wrath of God abiding on them still. So, go now with me, Romans 3.20. Right across the street there. Paul says, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. What people, wanna, what people are unwilling to realize and what people are unwilling to to embrace is that whereas there once was the ministry of condemnation where all the world was under sin and under the power of sin and there was just a ministry of condemnation draw not nigh you're separate from me I'm completely other from you God through his only begotten son Christ Jesus has made a way a provision not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. Where he says to all, everybody, those who are near and those who are far away. He says, come on in. He says, he says I'll take away the sin. I'll remove it. I'm going to give you now the ministry of righteousness. This is that glorious testimony that we find in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Where we see Paul describing the ministry of condemnation, the ministry of righteousness. And he declares that there's a veil over the face of Israel, that they cannot steadfastly look to the end of the law, where that new nature would come, where the glory of the, of, the, of the very power of God would be written upon our hearts and our minds. Our spirit would be changed. Our heart would be changed. Our nature would be changed. You're going to be confused so long as you've got the old man and the new man living in the same house. Old man's on top buck. New man's on the bottom buck. Jesus got half the kitchen, half the day. Devil's got half the kitchen the other half of the day. Whatever. I mean, Father wants us to come into a place of being totally liberated. Totally set free. Belonging 100% to Him. To where that no one has authority over us but Him. There is a place where you live, where you by your own willingness to believe what God says, give, empowers God as it were, gives God permission as it were, to have complete, total authority over your life. The law is never going to produce 
a state in the heart of the worshiper where there's now no more remembrance of sin. Where there's now no more consciousness of sin. Where there's now no more guilt. Where there's now no more condemnation. Huh? Because by the time you get to Romans chapter 8, because what Paul's going to do is, in Romans chapter 7, he's going to describe the condemnation, the inability to really please God and walk with God in righteousness and true holiness because of another law, the law of sin and death, dominion of disobedience, the dominion of the powers of darkness held over every saint of God until Jesus came liberated us. To ultimately come to Romans chapter 8 and say, there's now therefore no condemnation no more. There's therefore now no more condemnation to those who walk in the Spirit, to those who walk after the Holy Ghost and not after the flesh, not after human ability. Hallelujah. But for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free, liberated us from the law of sin and death. So that now the law of God is fulfilled in us by nature. It's not a dominion of a law that is ultimately enforcing the dominion of sin. Or the dominion of sin that is enforcing a dominion or need for law. Because now the governorship and the rule is in our heart. For Christ has come, God has come and made his abode on the inside of us. There's a total transformation of life. Hallelujah. So, Romans chapter 3 sets us up in verse 31. So what does he say? When he brings all of, and this is what, this is what this hyper grace movement is leaving out. First of all, hyper grace movement is not dealing with the fact that Adam's disobedience resulted in his being, him being cast out of the presence of God. It will not deal with the fact that the wages of sin is death. It's still this, that you cannot sow to the flesh and mock God because you're going to reap corruption. It won't deal with the reality that sin brings forth death. It, the the, the, the hyper grace movement actually lo locked in on Romans three twenty, Romans four fifteen, Romans five thirteen, and made an argument that now because the law was removed by Christ Jesus, sin is no longer accounted, and therefore there is no sense in even concerning yourself, even to the point of that. To actually repent over sin is to be legalistic. That's why it's so heretical. That's the hyper grace movement. It's the biggest movement being espoused right now by TBN, by so many different preachers. And, and, and you know, they come off with nice little words, and, you know, and I could name the preachers. Many of you would sit and listen to them. I couldn't listen to them five minutes because all I can hear is the spirit of deception. Honestly, I'm just telling you. I could listen to them five minutes. Spirit of deception to me. It's those people who, who, who are under, the, under seducing spirits that are there for people who have itching ears. Who want to be justified, self-justified in their state of sin. Who do not want to surrender the life completely over to God. Who want to continue on in sin. Who want to continue on in the wages of unrighteousness. So... That movement never dealt with the reality of what happened with during the days of Noah. Didn't deal with the reality of what happened in day with Sodom and Gomorrah. All these things happened before there was ever a law. The law of Moses. There was a law there, right? Because Paul already established that. And that's what he's hearkening back to. He already established that. He already established that the nations have the law written in their hearts. And, and you can see within them... A, a place or a position where even though they don't have the law of Moses, they have a law that is there either accusing or excusing them. Uh, 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 either condemning them or causing them to know that they're doing right. Put it in that vernacular. Now, Romans 3, 21, 31 says here, here's this, Paul, Paul brings us to the conclusion. He says, do we then make void the law through faith? First of all, what is the faith? First of all, what is the law? 
the law is the ministry of condemnation saying, draw not nigh, you're different than I am. The law is the con ministry of condemnation saying, do these things or you're going to die. The law is the ministry of God telling men that he's in need of a redeemer. What is faith? What is the definition of faith here? Faith is that which is brought to us by the Lord Jesus Christ where all of our sins have been washed away. They're not there anymore. Say they're not there anymore. Not there anymore. And there's the power to not have them there anymore. There is. Praise God for the blood of Jesus Christ that will cleanse us from all sin. But hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Because people go to seed on this. You need to go and look up all the verses of Scripture on the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses you from all sin. Because there's a chief Scripture that says if you walk in the light as He's in the light. Uh-oh. When people walk around with the mentality and the attitude that they're going to continue sin more or less every day, and they're just going to say... You know, that the blood of Jesus cleanses me from sin and they're just going to basically take a Pentecostal, do a Pentecostal genuflex or a Protestant pull my beads. Just religion. It's no different than the Roman Catholic Church. Just no, it's just no different from Hinduism. No different. In fact, it's worse because it's profaning his name. They set on sin. They're bent on sin. And the Lord says, if you walk in the light as he's in the light. Then you have fellowship one with another. That's another proof. Then the blood of Jesus Christ continually cleanses you from all sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha the Lord says if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we now being dead, cut off from sin, might live unto righteousness by whose wound we were healed. When we begin to re out, when we begin to look at the reality of this ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ of what the faith really is. When we begin to understand that this liberation that has come to us, that now we've been empowered to yield our members unto righteousness and have our fruits being holiness. The fruits of holiness is a life of righteousness. To have a, to have a life of holiness, to have the fruits of holiness, you have to have a life of righteousness. Huh? To have the fruits of peaches, you've got to have a peach tree. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holiness is only defined in the presence of God. Holiness is not defined outside of the presence of God. Holiness is defined by that which God himself dwells and exists in. It's not defined by any other means. You understand this? Yeah. He, he, he's Bodamaya. What the blood has done for us. The blood eradicated the vermin. The blood purigated. The life swallowed up the dead. Holiness, the contagion of holiness, swallowed up iniquity. The Lord says to them on that day, depart from me, I never knew you. That's a terrible thing. You never quit sinning. What, what, what word did he actually use there? Anomas. Anomas. You know what that means? Without law. Anomia. Without law. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Depart from me, ye that are without law. I never knew you. Huh. The law of Moses was done away with. Praise God. So that there was not a continual declaration that men is other than God. This is the faith. The faith is that we've been made one with him. He's in us and we're in him. He's invited us to come dwell in him. He said, come dwell in me. He says, if I dwell in you, if you dwell in me rather, and my word dwells in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done. What a relationship. He says, if we come and dwell in him, we'll bear forth fruit. And Father will take and purge the tree so it can bring forth more fruit. He'll prune the tree. He'll fix the tree. So there's a continual increase. Where we increase with the increase of God. Where there is a measurable fullness of Christ Jesus. Religion will not give you or afford you the opportunity to come into the fullness of the measure of the maturity of the ministry of Jesus. But it's the call of God. Religion will only give you a possibility of laying aside the sin 
and the weight that so easily besets you, but will never find an end. I should say it again. Religion will only afford you the opportunity to lay aside the sin and weight that so easily besets you, but will never find an end. You'll spend your whole life in doubt, unbelief, trying to lay something aside that Jesus eradicated by his blood. Hallelujah. Ha, bro, day. Because to lay aside the sin and the weight that so easily besets us is an act of obedience to the faith so that we may begin to run the race with joy. Hallelujah. We got a great cloud of witnesses around us saying, hey, guys, you can get this thing done. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So what does the Lord say there in Romans chapter 3 and verse 21? He said, do we make void the law of God through faith? Do we make void the law of God now that you've received a divine nature? Do you make void the law of God now that you receive the heart of God and the spirit of God? Do you make void the law of God which is just and good and holy? As Paul said in Romans chapter 7, it's just a man under the dominion of sin which the law testified that he was under the dominion of sin found no power to ultimately fulfill that law? Do we make void the law of God now that we are new creation, old things are passed away? Do we make void the law of God now that we the temple of the Holy Ghost and the expressions of God flow out of us like gushing rivers of, uh, of water coming out of our innermost being? I pray tonight you get so, I pray tonight you get so thirsty that I'm salty enough to you so you get thirsty. People sit and just self-justify when preaching goes on like this. They don't think, wait a minute, do I have a river coming out of me? Do I have a squirt coming out of me? I think what, what God's people have done is I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. <laughs> Where? Down, 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 down in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. And then all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost starts moving, and people really get genuinely happy by the Holy Ghost, and you get a little hysterical sometimes, and now everybody's going, run for your life. Devils are breaking out everywhere. Because if you do have joy in your heart, if Christ Jesus is in your heart, if the Holy Ghost has rule over your emotions, everything begins to change. Are you willing, are you willing to hear God testify to you that there should be rivers of divine expression of his person coming out of you? And are you willing then to say, I don't have that, but it's okay? You can't be willing to do that. Are you willing to hear the Lord say, you're a new creation, old things are passed away, but you can identify old things, and you're not intense about making sure that no old things are manifested in your life? That the former conversation, the old man has been crucified. That's to say, the old man is being crucified with Christ. That eventually, the body of sin might be destroyed. Did you notice it didn't say that? It says, the old man having been crucified. It's already done with Christ. The old man is crucified, was crucified. It's a done deal. Is crucified, past tense. That the body of sin might be destroyed. Have you received the circumcision of Christ? Which removed the body of the sins of the flesh. Pretty radical stuff, isn't it? And it's 100% genuine Bible. Colossians 2, 11. Romans 6, 4. It, a whole different life begins when you start living your life by the word. A whole different life begins when you start accepting and embracing what God's given you as a free gift that you don't have to earn. And it's not about deserving it. It's about participating with it and saying, okay, Lord, this is what I want to be. This is what I want to do.
I want you to look at this verse of scripture that I quoted just here in Romans chapter 8. As I try to, as I try to wind this up or wrap this up or whatever. It's so good to have grandbabies on the front row here tonight. They love being in church. Thank you, Jesus. That's all that I desire. See the Lord manifest His glory and power through my family. And you're part of my family. If you want to be. You're part of the family of God if you want to be. If you're part of the family of God, then you... Part of my family. If you have fellowship with him, then you have fellowship with me. If we have fellowship with him, we have fellowship with one another. It's true. It's so important. Fellowship is so important. There's a living proof of whether or not we've been born of him. Happening all the time around our life. In our life. Romans 8. There is therefore now no condemnation. How much condemnation do you deal with? How much condemnation do you deal with? How much guilt do you deal with? How much brow beating exercises do you have as a routine in your daily life? How much modern Protestant, modern Protestant walking up stairs of glass and beating yourself with whips do you take up on a daily basis? Do you find yourself holy and acceptable unto God? Yes. How many holy people are here tonight? It's the faith. <laughs> it's, the, it's the faith. It is the faith. That's the faith. That was once delivered unto the saints. Mm -mm 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 -mm. How many of you have the confession that I'm unholy? I'm unrighteous. Woe is me. There's no good thing in me. How many of you have that confession? There's no good thing in me. How many of you have that? Praise God, nobody has that confession. How many of you have the confession? Christ is in me. See, it's a totally different realm. One's the faith, one's religion. Christ is in me. My confidence of glory. It, it's the faith. It's the faith. It's the confession of the faith that produces the outworking of God in our lives. It's the testimony of your faith that overcomes all the things that are, would come to beset you, all the things that would come to take you out, all the things that would come to impose its lies and threats upon you that makes the difference. It's the declaration of his word in your mouth. There's no more condemnation. I'm in Christ Jesus. There's no more guilt. There's no more shame. Does the accuser still come? Yeah. How many of you mistaken the accuser for the Holy Ghost? Come on, tell the truth. <coughs> the accuser of the brethren. The slanderer. We want you to come to understanding of how God's constantly there dealing with us, loving us, showing us his love, his acceptance, empowering us with his approval. If he commended his love to us while we're dead in our trespasses and sins. Now that we've been made righteous, now that we've been washed in the blood, now that we are His holy people, born of His Spirit, kept by His power, who can lay any charge to God's elect? Isn't that beautiful? beautiful. Isn't it wonderful to think of yourself in the light of what Christ Jesus has done for us? Where He's washed us, He's made us holy, He's made us acceptable, He's given us everything that we have need of. All we have to do is be willing to participate. There's no more condemnation. I'm in the Spirit. I've been born of the Spirit. I've been washed in the blood. 
I've been born of the Spirit. That's the most important thing that you need to say. That's your testimony. Somebody says, why are you different? I've been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. I've been born of the Spirit. The power of sin and death has no more authority or dominion over my life. I live under the rule and the governorship of Jesus Christ, who's King of kings and Lord of lords, who's head over all principalities and powers and mights and dominions. I want everybody to stand with me. Hallelujah. I want you to just lift your hands towards heaven right now. Father, we thank you for the anointing. Father, we thank you for your presence. Father, we thank you for the life-changing power of the Holy Ghost. And we ask you, Lord, that everybody in this place would begin to experience the power of this law of life that is in Christ Jesus. I want you to listen to this. For the law of the Spirit of life. I'm living in the Spirit. I'm walking in the Spirit. Spinnies are led by the Spirit. They're the sons of God. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. The law of Moses declared that the law of sin and death is there. When the law of Moses was absent, the law of sin and death was not being shown or accounted in the hearts and minds of men. It was still being judged by God. But praise God that Christ Jesus and the faith that is by Christ Jesus removed the dominion of death and sin. And there is no longer any law that can testify that it's there. Because we've been born again. He says to us, for what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Huh. And for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Listen to this. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who walk in the Holy Ghost. God's given you a wonderful and a privilege. Listen, listen to me. If you don't remember anything else here tonight, understand this. Father's given you the wonderful privilege and opportunity to be continually filled with the Spirit. Until you are born again, that's not even possible. God, <clears throat> excuse me. God has given you the wonderful privilege and opportunity to put on Christ Jesus. To be endued with Him, in other words. Until you are made a new creation, a new man. That was not possible. Are we going to wake up tomorrow morning and just leave that on hold and go about our earthly working and our earthly dealings and then all of a sudden find ourselves being overwhelmed with all these worldly influences of sin and iniquity? When you had all that time, the privilege and the opportunity to walk into, to step into something that causes you to soar in a heavenly realm. To live in a heavenly realm. To walk in the glory of His life. And I tell you, His life is abundant. And the Lord said it's abundant life because there was really no other way to describe how glorious this life is. It's just abundant. Oh, wouldn't it be a wonderful thing if God's people were able to discover how wonderful it is to walk in the Spirit. Live by the Spirit. Find a place. Where everything that God ever testified that he wanted in man was established in you. I'm going to tell you what it's like. It's like this. It's like every day you and I have an opportunity to come and eat of the forbidden fruit. 
God, and we say, no, I'm going to obey you, God. Every day, Father gives us a brand new start in Christ Jesus. And then that day, let's say tomorrow, you involve yourself in something the Father has given you power over. It's called sin. He's given you power over it. And as soon as you step into sin, you activate the law. I don't want you to forget it. Don't let anybody tell you it's not true. The wage of sin is death. God said, they that do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's what he said. But what if you're willing to be so taught of God, so led by the Holy Ghost, that you just simply are not going to walk under the influence of the spirit of disobedience anymore? It's a beautiful thing because if you go and you eat of that forbidden fruit and you trespass against God and you disobey, if you with a broken and a contrite heart in sincerity and truth with a purpose never to do again, cry out to God and take the sacrifice for sin, the blood of Jesus. And with a broken heart before the Lord, with a heart filled with repentance before the Lord, say, you say, Lord, cleanse me from my sin. I'm so sorry I did. I can't imagine I did it. You know what you're going to be doing when you do that? You're going to be moving anything out of the way that was causing that sin. I guarantee you. If it's whatever it is. If it's your iPad, your iPhone, whatever it is. You're going to get rid of it. You're not going to pass that way again. You're going to get serious. There's going to be commitment. Just walking around with a determination or even with a, an unwillingness to take the, the, the proper steps. With respect to what you need to do to walk right with God is half-heartedness is not true before God. You're in jeopardy. At least Ahab put sackcloth upon himself and ashes upon himself and sat down and began to repent. He got serious with God. God heard him. God, you're the, the most wicked man. The most wicked person, God will hear them in their repentance and show mercy. People, this is serious business. And there the Lord, <clears throat> with His precious blood, cleanses us. So it's like we get to do it again. And every day we get to do it again. Every day we get another chance. But you got to get it right. Hello? Father's given us everything that we need to get it right. He made us right to get it right. And when we're willing to get it right, then you'll begin to see revival. You'll begin to see the movings of God spring up in the midst of His people. When there's a consecration in God's way, the same words that have been used again and again over the generations since Jesus, bend me, Lord. Fills your mouth. I'm yours. Fill me, Lord. Did you write that song we were singing tonight? Just sing. Would you just sing the just sing that first chorus of that? Will you just sing it? I just want you to sing it. Just 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 listen to this. You know. There were so many, during the holiness movement, the holiness faith movement, the late 1800s, God did a lot of things, set up a lot of things for revival in the land. The apostolic faith movement at the turn, turn of the century brought a fresh wind of, of the power of God, but we turned it into religion. Time we get, come on people, it's time we get back. There's very little true Pentecost left in the earth. There's very little true expressions. Of rivers of living water, rushing mighty wind, the power and the authority of signs, wonders, and miracles. The faith that was once delivered unto the saints that won't have it any other way than God's way. That's a determination by you and me. Do you understand? If you're not willing to give yourself to practicing, I mean, give yourself to the activity of relationship to say, on a daily and continual basis, to be filled with the Spirit. Say, Lord, Baptize me afresh. Come fill me, Lord. Come fill me to overflowing. God, I stand here before you. I wait upon you. In the Old Testament, you had put an offering upon the altar, depending upon what time period it was. And you're there with your arms stretched out before the Lord. 
And if you knew God like Elijah knew God, you'd stretch your arm out before God. And you would wait for the fire to fall. Can you imagine what would happen in your life if you stretched out your hands before God and waited until all of a sudden you began to be filled with the Spirit? Where all of a sudden the riches of heaven, the wealth of God's grace begin to overwhelm you? Woo! It's a good thing. It's a glorious thing. Oh, this is what God demands. To really be consciously aware of putting on Christ Jesus. To, be, to, to actually engage in what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. We look in a mirror. And what do we see? I see Jesus. But who are you looking at? Me. But I can't see me no more. I see Jesus. Then what happens? You go from glory to glory. What happens when we embrace the faith and won't let it go? When we seize that for which we have been seized. Come on, man. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. There's a participation. The more, look, dear people, the more you give yourself to this place, the stronger it gets. The more you give yourself to asking the Holy Spirit come fill you as you stand there worshiping Him and praising Him the stronger the manifestation, the outworking becomes. It's true. And then with those hands raised, fire falls. They kept the hands raised and petitioned before the Lord until the sacrifice was completely turned to smoke. There wasn't anything left but the ash. What if you were to offer yourself up to the Lord like that now on a daily basis? And recognize that there's a morning and an evening sacrifice. Do you know how much change would come in your life? Do you know how much change would come into your life? If it wasn't for the Lord right there, I would have just stumbled. He held me up so I didn't trip. Because my heel got caught there. God's so good. He's just, oh, God's always working miracles for us. Sometimes we just don't. We take them for granted. He's always bearing us up. Dear people, it's time for us to seek the Lord. It's time for us to begin to go after God. And, and, and in such a way that the reality of those things which he's described in the word, his word, that he's purposed for us to have is not only, re, not only measurable and revealed in our life, but there's a consecration to a continual increase. I'm be happier tomorrow than I was today. I'm going to walk in greater faith for divine help than I did today. I'm going to walk in a greater dimension of the manifestation of signs, wonders, and miracles in my life tomorrow than I did today. I'm going to wait on God to get filled. You start reading the Word of God on a daily basis with a hunger for God, and you're going to get changed. Someday you're going to get changed. You start giving yourself to prayer every day, you're going to get changed. You're going to grow. That's food and drink. You start giving yourself Think about the honor that you have here. Think about this. You have been honored with the privilege of literally putting on the very person Christ Jesus. We get up in the morning. We're going to rush out the door to go take care of whatever it is that we supposedly are going to take care of for the kingdom of God. And usually it's nothing but about self-service. I'm just looking for, a, I'm looking for a way. To see God's people established in a totally different manner of living. A lifestyle that's heavenly. Somebody, somebody said, are you trying to tell me that we're not supposed to go to work? You know, I'm going to tell you something. I go to work every day. And every day I'm filled with the Spirit. There was a time in my life where I worked a secular job full time. 
And so there's been many of God's people, that have, the coal miners of the Cane Ridge Revival. They had a great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. They got up at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning to go work in the coal mines till 4 in the afternoon to then go to the meeting and stay there till sometimes after midnight. Where's our, you know, what is it, that where, where's our passion? And we just want to, we just, we need to set our passion and our affections to having that which God described. Because the moment that we do, we're going to get it. And we may, not, we may not experience the full dimensions of it. Some people do. Some people experience the full dimensions of it. Day one. Other people got doubt and religion and all kinds of stuff got to be broken down first. The bottom line of it is, dear people, listen to me. When this is our passion and our heart set on the Lord, we're going to have those things which He's promised, which He desires. When it's what we want more than anything else. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 See, just, just seeing the course of that, or the verse of that. Listen to this. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with more of you. That I may love as you love and do as you would do breathe on me breath of god for i am holy thine no riches of earth could ever compare to your glory so divine now listen to me. There's a practical application to this. When there's a practical application, when, when there is a relationship application. Is this off? There's a practical application to this. When there begins to be an outworking of practical application, now you've moved into relationship. You can say... Lord, I'm, I'm, I, I belong completely to you, all you want. But until the day comes where you find yourself living out a life of a living sacrifice. Where you make everything about the life of Christ. He's made everything about you having. He's made all of his interest about you and I having his life. Can you hear me? Yeah. He's made all of his interest about you and I having his life. We need to make all of our interest about having his life. Having received it. Now living it. Having all the expressions of it. Growing and maturing into all the fullness of it. There is no limitation. The law of sin and death has been removed. Every testimony that was against us saying that we're not one with God and that we can't be one with Him, it's been removed. It's been taken out of the way. Jesus said, Father, the glory you gave to me, I've given it to them so they can be one just like you and I are one. Now, that's something you have to just receive right now. That's not later, that's now. I want you to just lift your hands towards heaven. I just want you to receive these things right now. I want you to count it done. I want you to know that Father never turns a deaf ear to when the mention of His Son's name comes upon the lips of any single person. And now, just let the Holy Spirit show you how to devote your life to His life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for a rushing mighty wind of your presence right now. Ha. Now listen. Tonight I'm going to pray for some people. And it might be hard for some of you. But there are a number of people in this place. You have not found authority over the lust of the flesh. 
it comes at you with its immorality. I know right now that there are people in this place, you are involved in participating with sexual immorality in various different forms. I want you to know that there is absolutely not a worse crime against heaven. There's not a higher level of participating with demon spirits than that. And it's got to be broken off of your life. And you're the one who's going to break it because Jesus already broke it. And you're the one who's going to say, I'm not doing it. You, you know, I'm not going to do this anymore. Jesus Christ is the minister, is not the minister of sin. He's the minister of righteousness. I want the thing broken. I want the thing broken off of you. I want the thing broken off of you. But how desperately do you want it broken off of you? Some people are willing to have it broken off of them to the level where they're willing to come up front and stand, say, you know, lay hands on me. But how about you want to go to the level of having it broken off of you where you're busted, you're weeping, you're crying, you dive to the front saying, oh, God. So I said, well, it only happens, you know, in my life, you know, once a week or once a month. Yeah, but the, Satan knows exactly where to come pull your string. And he needs to find a place. He, need, he's, he needs to find that he can't come pull a string in your life. He comes, he has nothing in you. Father wants nothing but his glory seen in your, seen in your life. Listen, listen, men, women, you need to get married. If you can't contain yourself. Huh? You know, Paul put it real plainness of speech. It is better to marry than to fill in the blank. So, Paul really believed that you're going to burn in hell if you sin. Rut row. <laughs> there is a consequence. We live in a lascivious time. We live in a day where the prophet Isaiah is fulfilled. Having eyes full of adultery, they could not cease from sin. Because everywhere we look, we're looking at just such a massive, lascivious culture. I want to, I, God wants to break the thing off of you tonight. There's a couple of people, there's two people in particular that the Lord's really just pointed out to me. And the body of Christ really ought to be about ministering and helping those who do not find a way out of the curse they've not found the, the, the life of the overcomer yet you want to find the life of the overcomer man there is a place Jesus he's the overcomer Jesus he's it he's the overcomer How many people in this place tonight you would be willing to lay hold on God for the things that he's purposed and declared should be in his church and in your life specifically more than you're going to go after your bank account or your food or all the stuff that you have interest in in your everyday life. Does that mean you need to quit your job and go live in a cave? No. But a passion takes hold of you. Passion's on you, Annalyn. You had the passion. Raphael, you had the passion. You had the passion. Daryl. And I, I really, I would, rather, I would rather convince you that you have the passion. That's what God the Holy Ghost would do rather than try to convince you that you don't have the passion. I, if tonight, if I could do one thing, if I could just convince everybody in this place that sin has no more dominion over you, has no authority over you. It cannot make you do anything. You choose it. You choose it, and you choose it as an act of treason against God because someplace you've justified it. Someplace you've allowed it. Someplace you've, conf someplace you, you've made it less than what it is. Tonight, we just, we, if the law can make sin exceedingly sinful, in other words, if the law can really point out the gross dimensions of the dominion of sin and death, 
How much more can the Holy Ghost? What if we lived continually under His inspiration, under His insight, under His knowledge, under His wisdom, under His fear of the Lord, under His hating of evil? Oh, what a beautiful life. Oh, what a revival. You know what, this, you know what the church needs in America right now? They need a revival of the hating of evil. They need a revival of being strengthened to stand against sin. It's not all these other things. It's a revival to come into agreement with this wonderful righteousness of God. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, for a Holy Ghost conviction that will not stop. Father, I pray for a Holy Ghost conviction that is so intense in every single person's life that they're consciously mindful of those things which you've purposed and willed for us to do. Jesus. Jesus. So to Ramanea say. So to Masatekia. So to Masatekia. You know, tonight, if I called for those who are sick in their body to come, if you had sickness in your body, you'd be healed. You'd come. But what if there's sickness in your spirit? giving place to sin and iniquity, the practice of sin, the continuance in sin, is a spiritual disease. Jesus alone has the cure. Somebody says, how can it be when you're born again and give, made a new creature? Well, you know, you still have the knowledge of good and evil, and the only, the only one that can handle the knowledge of good and evil is the Holy Ghost. And unfortunately, religion won't teach you to live the life by the Spirit, by the Holy Ghost. Unfortunately, religion hasn't brought people into a place that says, listen, you have total authority. All these things in the world has no more authority over you to empower you. I want you to be empowered tonight. I want you to be empowered tonight to walk with God. I want you to be empowered tonight to be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of His might. To take in yourself the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against all the wiles of the enemy. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness. Against principalities and powers and authorities, rulers of this world. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Who's a match for that? Who's a match for that? No one. No one is a match for that. You got to, you got to be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of His might. You got to be strengthened by the Spirit in your inner being. Sabaramoste, sabaramazaredesi, sabaramosteya. People, give yourself to being filled with the Spirit, and you'll con you, you're going to find a stronger, overwhelming force of heaven in your life every day that you give yourself to this realm. It won't be the same. Some of you, I'm just going to point out to you, you haven't really changed. You received the same amount as you could receive when I first met you. And it's because you don't practice this. You haven't given yourself to this realm. And I'm not going to stand by and watch people that will listen to me. I can't. My, my mama used to tell me, look, son, you can lead a horse to water. You can't make him drink. Because I used to, I'd grab, I'd grab the horse by the ear, get on his head, and stick his nose down in the water. No, I can take a big horse and get them down on the ground. That's my wife. There are certain ways to do it. And so I just figured I'd do that with God's people too. Get your head down in this water. You need a drink. Can't do it. If there's a thirsting, if there's a hunger, you're going to do it. You're going to take all these things and you're going to do it. And 10 years from now, there's going to be a greater capacity. You're not going to be just standing here looking like you look right now. And reacting to God the way you're reacting right now. Don't allow it. Don't allow it. Say, I, I refuse.
to be the same. I'm going to grow. I'm going to increase with the increase of God. I'm going to bear fruit so that He can bring forth more fruit. I'm going to grow up into all things in Christ Jesus. Who is the head? I'm going to live in the Spirit. I'm walking in the Spirit. I'm going to be led by the Spirit. In other words, I'm fully giving myself over to the rule of the Holy Ghost. Do you have to talk God into that? No. You have to talk God into giving him, him taking complete dominion over your life? He's trying to talk you into it. Let me just tell you it like it is. When you step into sin, you walk away from him. You walk away from him to do it. And nobody can tell me they're filled with the Spirit and partaking of sin. Nobody can tell me they're filled with the Spirit and they don't want to live a life. You know what God's going to show you? I do live a life of faithfulness. He's going to teach you how to live a life of purity and righteousness and godliness. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? For the grace of God that brought salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust and to live righteously and godly. I know it says soberly, but I want to emphasize righteously and godly. I think people get cut, stuck on sober. I decided to take that out. It doesn't seem like anybody's listening to me, so I said, I'm going to say it different. Amen. Amen. And then you can hear Anne in the echo. It's over. So you want to make, me, make sure I don't leave out a word. Amen. Holy Ghost is here to teach me to walk in righteousness. Woo! What is that? That's the excellent character and conduct of Almighty God. You know what righteousness is? Can I tell you what righteousness is? It's an expression that you in heaven. Can I tell you what righteousness is? It's the expression of the kingdom of God. For the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink, but righteousness, joy, and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Where does righteousness come from? Holy Ghost. That wasn't a, that wasn't a trick question. Where does peace come from? That was a little better. Woo! Where does joy come from? Somebody said, I just don't have any joy. Where does joy come from? Somebody said, I just don't have any joy. Well, I must not have the Holy Ghost because I don't have the joy. No, it's you're just, you're just not willing to participate. You need to open up your mouth and say, Lord, thank you for the joy. You need to open up your mouth and say, Holy Spirit, thank you for the Holy Ghost. You need to open up your mouth and say, thank you for the righteousness. Thank you, I thank you, God, for the gift of righteousness. I got this amazing gift. It's more expensive than anything on the, on the planet. It's worth more than anything that's ever been valued. It's the gift of righteousness. I was giving it. You think I'm just going to leave it sit, sitting on a shelf at home, dust it off every once in a while, and show it to my friends when they come in? Oh, yeah, I got this gift from God. <laughs> How does it operate? How do all these things that God has given us operate? By the Holy Ghost. So you don't have to go ahead and be filled with the Spirit continually. So how are you going to do that? You're going to have to deny yourself. Because you're not under the dominion of sin. You're not under the dominion of death. The devil can't stop you one moment. But you can stop you completely. Oh, the devil, 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 devil. Oh, he did it. Did this and did that. Oh, we're being attacked. What are you doing that is so important in the kingdom of God that you're being attacked? People are legends in their own mind. You know what I'm saying? I can see why Reinhard Bonnke may be attacked. But you know what? He doesn't notice it. And everybody who's doing something doesn't notice it. Everybody who's doing nothing, oh, they're being attacked. There's certain people, oh, yeah, we're being attacked. Satan's attacking us in his finances, in our finances. Well, exactly how is he doing that, and why is he doing that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When was the last crusade that you sponsored? We're getting ready to do a great 
crusade in Havana, Cuba, 55,000 people. Can you imagine that? All the conservative Christians were all upset at Obama for removing the embargo. All of us Kingdom of God manifest people were going, Woo! We were going, Yeah! Time for a Holy Ghost shutdown of a nation. Because the Lord's opening up the doors right, left, center. We're crying, we're crying for Bhutan, for the door to open in Bhutan. Then for Kashmir, the door will open in Kashmir. You saw, you saw the pictures of Myanmar, of uh, uh, Burma. There, was more than, there were more than 30,000 people there. There were probably, it was probably more like 50,000. Tim just always likes to keep it on a, on a smaller scale. One dear friend of mine said, what's the best way to tell people? Because he, he would normally have 200,000 people in his crusades, measurably. Just say, just say it's multitudes. Because you're always accurate there, the multitudes. We had many, many people, as far as I could see. Well, then if you're, if you're, going, if you're planning on taking care of the whole finances for, for Cuba, maybe I could see how Satan would attack you and your finances. But you're all attacking your finances here because you're doubt and unbelief. That's all that is. Nothing to do with some attack. It's just your doubt and unbelief. You're not participating with God. You're living your own life. Still living the life of the Spirit. Now, if I could get people to hear this for real, we could get a change. Because you say, is this is that right? And then if you would recognize that, then you say, wait a minute. I'm getting rid of this doubt and unbelief. I'm stepping into faith. I want you to start praying, praying for the Castro family. I'm believing God for an open door over the next two, three months right now. The crusade is planned for September. I'm believing God for an open door over the next few months to be able to get an appointment set up with the with cabinet members in the nation of Cuba to be able to give an invitation to the, to the Castro family, any part of the Castro family. Of course, the 55,000 people are going to be there. I'm going to tell you right now. Castro family, Fidel may be up there himself. I have a friend of mine, a friend of my dad, went uh, back... 40 years ago to cast the devil out of Castro to liberate Cuba. I'm not kidding you. He was a genius. They threw him in prison. You could, no prison could hold him because he knew how every locks, locks, he could make a key for any locking system. So they, they, he, they constantly find him outside of his cell. They finally let him come home. He's the guy who invented all of the various different um, guns that have uh, no recoil. He's the one who put all that together for the military. Now we have a chance to bring what, what we're believing God for. And we want you to stand in prayer and faith and intercession. Your prayer is as strong as your commitment to Jesus. I'm going to say it again. The effectiveness of your prayer is as strong as your commitment to Jesus. The prayers of a righteous man has a lot of effect. Somebody, how, where's righteousness come from? Holy Spirit. There we go. Somebody walking in the Spirit. And then, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Now, what if I could get a commitment out of you tonight for that? What if I had an altar call for that? If I could lay hands on you and stick that inside of you. That's your will. The Holy Ghost will come and touch you. He was there, I, would, I, I need to come and feel happy. I only feel happy in church. Well, that's good. That's a start. I need to feel the joy. I need to feel the vibrating energy of the Holy Ghost. Well, that's good. He wants to touch you that way and minister to you that way so you can live that way because it's good to be filled with the Spirit. But there still comes at the end of it all, your will. All that's going to happen by the touch of God is perhaps your will now will be taken to another level <laughs> of commitment. Man, and you go, it's just too good to live in that beauty. I, I love the love too much to mess it up. I, I love the joy too much to mess it up. You know, if I have, if I ever allow any sin in my life, it is such a grievous thing to me. 
because God has taught me how to hate evil. And when it's that painful, you don't want it. It ain't worth it. And I pray you get sin sick. I pray it ain't worth it no more. I pray that you discover that you brought all your woes upon yourself. It is your sin that has destroyed you, the Lord said. It is your sin and your iniquity that has consumed you. And then I'll take another layer where people get stuck in religion. And they don't move it on into relationship. If you had a thermometer tonight, if you had a barometer tonight, some measuring device, it could show you how much religion you have in your life versus how much relationship with the Lord you have in your life. What do you think that that would look like? If you had a scale and there was religion versus relationship. Summer, I'd tell you right now, it would tip. It would be relationship because you haven't been around long enough to have religion. The more people stay around the church and don't get filled with the glory of God, the more opportunity they get filled with religion. Because not moving on with God is going to be, it's going to be displaced with something. It's going to be filled with something. What does it look like to be filled with the Spirit? Can you describe it? I want you to go home tonight. And I want you to write it out. What does it look like to be filled with the Spirit, to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire? And then ask yourself, do I have that? Then maybe ask your spouse, do I have that? And don't lie, because all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. Don't just say something because you don't want to make somebody feel bad. Just tell it like it is ministries national or local. Because you've got to be local before you're national, national before you're international. To tell it like it is ministries local. I look at my wife sometimes, she tells me all this stuff. Now you tell, come on now. I try to get her to tell me. Whatever it is I'm thinking. But just be honest. Say, ask yourself, what does it look like to have rivers coming out of me? <laughs> In Jesus' name. Get out of my throat. Begin to enumerate it. You know what the first expression of rivers are? The miracle of tongues. You have that miracle expression? Aren't you just so grateful for it? Yes. How much you'll participate with it? What are other dimensions of the rivers of God? That hook up right with that. Joy unspeakable. Do you have it? Ask your spouse. Do I have joy unspeakable? <coughs> I command you to do it now. I command you before the living God, you got to do it. Man, when I bring that out, you better be careful. You better be careful. I bring out the command. The Lord's going to hold you to it. I want you to do it because I want you to, I want a hunger to start in your life. I, wanna I want you to demand change. God's already demanded it. You have to participate. God gave me one word for this year. Say it. It's about that hard. The Holy Ghost constantly saying, stay with the group because you're wandering off. Looking at the problems, wandering off. Looking at the circumstance, wondering off, oh, why does anybody love me? Wondering off, oh, why does everything work out so bad for me? Everything's a big word. What, what you really have is everything that pertains to life and godliness. What you really have is all spiritual blessings in the heavenly realm. You just, when you step out, of, listen to me, when you step out of darkness into light, the influence of the Holy Ghost becomes more profound to you than the influences of this world. When you're still in darkness, the sounds of the influence of this world are stronger than the influences of the Holy Ghost. And those of you who practice living in condemnation, no, I'm not talking to you. Because I've seen people sit, stand in church for 15, 20 years, and they're still the first one to be condemning themselves. Yeah, that's me. That must be, that must be me. 
You need to get out of that must be me. And start saying, well, that surely ain't me. I don't know who that is, but I praise God I'm delivered from that. <laughs> because when is it going to be? I say to people, are you saved? God knows. Yeah, you're not saved. <laughs> are you saved? I hope so. You're not saved. It's about time you start having a good confession. It's about time you start repeating what God said. Father said, I put, he said, I put my words in your mouth. Why would you have your own words then? Oh, I wish I could be Jeremiah. Ezekiel. God can't put his words in, her, in their mouth. God's put his words in your mouth. The only difference is they spoke them and you're not, perhaps. <laughs> this word of faith, which we preach to you. Hallelujah. I'm just seeing what I'm doing right now as I'm just waiting on the movings of the Holy Ghost. I'm just waiting on your responsiveness to the movings of the Holy Ghost. That's all I'm doing. I'm ministering to you out of the realms of the Spirit. And in it, you, nothing you try to do, you say, oh, okay, okay, okay. okay this right. <laughs> Ain't nothing going to happen. Ain't nothing going to happen. It's, it's happening. There, you have the capacity to receive and flow, or you don't. What is that? What then does that manifest? That manifests where you're at. That's all. Because reality of it is people at church, and churches do this, they get to a threshold. This is it. This is what, this is all that the people will participate with. It's a threshold. You can see it all over the place. In different denominations, you can see a threshold of the knowledge of God, a threshold of the activity of the Spirit of God, a, a threshold of the influences of God. Well, what if you basically say, look, I don't want no more thresholds. I'm pushing the th I'm going to push the envelope, oh God. And you begin to cry out to God. And you begin to respond to God. You begin to allow the effectiveness of the anointing of the Holy Spirit to touch you deeply. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you know where we're at here in this church? I'm going to tell you where we're at. Most of the growth that has to happen in this church is you what you are at home. People want to dump their kids off of the school and try to think that they're going to be changed people. No, you're going to get, they're going to be what you are at home. They want to dump them off the Sunday school and act like the Sunday school teacher is responsible for messing their kids up. No, you already messed them up before they got here. Are you listening to me? Yes. Hello. Reality is a terrible, ugly thing sometimes. Don't get all sad, disappointed, feel like somebody's beating you up. Somebody's telling you the truth. You ought to get glad and be liberated. <laughs> Because truth sets free. Oh, you've been doing hard. So I knew that you were a hard man. <laughs> Reaping where you did not sow. No, I'm telling you the truth. I'm speaking to you by the Spirit of God to break you out of the, of the rut you in. Because as far as I'm concerned, anytime there's a threshold, it's a rut. Because there are no thresholds. It's unlimited opportunity. I'm telling you. It's your homework. It's now what you begin to develop in your private life with the Lord. In your walk with the Lord at home. In your walk with the Lord in the secret place. Because there, those things that have been imparted to you by the Word and by the Spirit in the place begins now to develop. It's got to grow in you. It's got to grow and mature and develop in you. It ain't going to grow and mature and develop in me. Then you're going to come back and I'm going to lay hands on you. Now it's going to grow and develop in you and you didn't do nothing. And it doesn't work that way. God, the Holy Ghost, is the preacher in this church. Somebody said, if I just, we just had Jesus for a ministry. If we just had Paul the Apostle, my goodness, we'd be through the roof. If Reinhardt was the preacher, or whoever, it would be different. No, same you. They would be dealing with you just like I'm dealing with you. And you'd be going home doing exactly what you're doing right now. I want you to make a shift. I want you to find the gears. I want you to make a shift. And I believe, I've watched as many of you have done it, as many of you have participated reading the Word of God in 90 days. I see, just seen basic shift. It's something you should have done, some of you, many years ago. It's just, I got tired of diddle dallying around. And I pulled out the old, I command you now, in Jesus' name. I adjure you by the most high God, in other words. Huh? 
Who am I talking to you? Who am I talking to you? You, you, and nothing but you. But it's you that's going to have to submit to the Holy Ghost before the Holy Spirit's ever going to be able to have freedom to do anything he wants to do. And our submission to him is agreeing with what Jesus said, agreeing with the word. It's just that simple. It's not abstract. It's not esoteric. It's coming at the crossroads and finding yourself in a situation where you're ready to let somebody have it. And the Lord says, bless them to persecute you. And you say, okay, I'm going to set self aside. I'm going to bless them. Holy Spirit, give me the capacity to bless. It's that fundamental kind of walk with God. It's finding yourself waking up in the morning and, and, you, and you don't feel well. Last night I thought I was going to die. I commended my spirit to the Lord. No, I, it's, it's just like I got hit with something like I haven't been hit with for many, many years. You know what I did? I just prayed all night. I said, you foul thing. I said, go. You foul. Because what's happened? Because I've given myself to that. I'm not let, I'm not let up. So I just laid there all night. Go. Leave. And the rights. Nobody can tell me this sickness has a hold on me. It's no right. I have. I am persuaded. I have believed something that causes me to fight a good fight. I want you to grab a hold of what God has for you. I want you to step into the relationship that is available to you. And then what happens is when you in, begin to engage on another level, all of a sudden you're going to be going, you're going to come to me and go, what's wrong with me? What's in the way? There's people in here that needed to come to me 20 years ago and say, what's wrong with me? What's in the way? And I would have told you. Because I knew then and I know now. None change. There's people in here that nothing has changed. And, when, and, and, and reality is the Lord wants to speak directly to you. He speaks in general. And sometimes some of you, I've actually said, you know what? You don't want to do that. And I almost stepped out beyond my boundaries. And say, the Lord said, you know, just saying, look, leave them alone. Let's see if they'll get it. Because the Lord wants to have a personal relationship with you. Isn't that amazing? He wants you to hear. You're going to have to begin to deal with reality. If you begin to deal with reality, you listen to me. Those of you listening, watching on the web, watching by YouTube. You begin to deal with the reality of what God has for you. And where you're at. You begin to cry out to God. I, I tell you right now, you won't have to really come to ask me. He'll show you. This is what's in your way. This is what hinders you. But sometimes it takes a while, and it's best to go ahead and expedite it. Come to somebody who already sees, is watching every soul. Or just listen with different ears when the Word of God's going forth. And don't say, oh, he must be talking about somebody else. Let me just say this, where you want to go. I can wake up in the morning. And I can get out of my bed. Actually, even before I get out of my bed, I get filled with the Spirit. And that's the Bahaila will hit me. And then I will stay with it until I am overwhelmed and flowing with that glory divine. And then I stay in that glory divine. Now, listen, in the in the beginning, it wasn't, it didn't come with that kind of intensity. But there was a commitment, and there was still an overflow. There was still a sabarun, a Thank you, Father. But now it's greater intensity. It's a greater outworking. There's a greater manifestation. Why? I grow in it. I develop in it. There's an increased capacity to receive. There's an increase in faith. You, you have an increase in faith. You begin to move in miracles you can't even imagine. You have an increase in faith. You begin to receive from the Holy Ghost like you can't even imagine. But there has to be, the faith has to be focused there and developed there. And if it's not, if you just live the life of doubt and unbelief and, oh, I feel good sometimes, don't feel good the other times. I got the power got on me sometimes, don't have it on me other times. And it's all passive. 
That's nuts. You're not going to get anywhere. It's active. Lord, I don't want to be without you. Come feel me. I don't stick I am. I, and then, and then, it, it, then if, I, if I feel any kind of dislike, which is hate, I say, oh, God, fill me with your love. Or if I feel just indifference. Uh, just indifference. I don't want indifference. God don't have indifference. I want the boat of CI to produce the love and the joy and the peace and the goodness. If I don't feel goodness, I'm going to pray in the Holy Ghost until the goodness comes. I'm going to ask the rock for a drink, and he's going to give me the supply. He's going to give me the righteousness. Can you get the joy and the peace anytime you ask for it? Then you can get the righteousness anytime you ask for it too. Some of you are shaking your heads right now. I want to challenge you. I'll bring you up here and ask you. I want to see it. I want you. I'll come bring you right up here in the spotlight. I'm gonna, I want to just. We want to all stand here and watch you and say, "Okay, ask the Lord for the joy. We want to see you get the joy." Because you are nodding your head. And all liars shall have their part in lake of fire. And we want to give you occasion, opportunity to repent. Before it's forever too late you with me God the Holy Ghost demands truth it's best to say you know what I really don't know how to hook up with the joy you know if it's there it's there and I'm happy about it if it's not there you know what I just have to go with the sadness and the sorrow then that's truth enough for change oh my god that's good that's reality God the Holy Ghost going to hook up with truth he's not gonna hook up with pretend Maybe some people actually convince themselves. You know what I'm saying? That they're happy. <laughs> and that they have joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's why it's good to ask people around you. Do you feel like that I am a witness of, of joy unspeakable and full of glory? Do you feel like that I have that in my life? And I would, just, I would like to just make myself accountable to you. If you see me walking around with sorrow and sadness, would you say, hey, I see that you're giving place to yourself. Self's ruling you. You're bowing to self. Rather than denying. Huh? Because if you do it, you practice it, faith will grow. Faith will increase, man. It'll develop. Ten years from now, you'll say, you'll, you'll ask God to do something in that realm and it'll be powerful. It would come instantaneously, instantaneously. It would come instantaneously right now. But it may not come at the same display of power and glory. But give yourself to faith. Healing, miracles, love, joy, prophecy, whatever it is. Preaching, whatever it is. See, actually, right now, the, the room is actually filled with prophecy. Right now, the room is actually filled with the things of heaven. We want you to be able to we want you to be able to reach in and grab a hold of it. We want you to be able to draw on your wealth and your riches, but you've got to have an identity to do it. Because you say, I want I'm gonna draw out some of my some of my wealth right now. And the the, the teller is saying, I need to see your ID. Well, I don't really have an ID. I'm kind of a little conflicted right now. That identity is Christ Jesus. That identity is a certainty. Can I show you how to get into the fullness of God right now? To know and believe the love that God has for you. That's how I get healed right there. That's how I get strengthened right there. Woo! Hallelujah. The fires, the Holy Ghost, the fire of His presence, His presence, it's like a rain, His presence, it's like a fire, His presence, it's like a rushing mighty wind, His presence, it's like rivers, overwhelming you. Touching you, filling you, changing you, perfecting you, building you up, causing you to receive your inheritance. 
to walk as the heirs of God. To walk around saying, I'm blessed. I'm blessed with every spiritual blessing. I'm filled with every good thing from heaven. I'm my beloved's and he is mine. He's supplying all that I have need of. Let me just tell you something. Father is giving you as much of the wealth, spiritually and naturally, that you are using in proportion that you are using in the kingdom. You don't need any more than that. So what if you started doing more in the kingdom? That's what's going to open up the supply of the wealth spiritually and materially. I know spiritual attack against your finances. God's providing all that you have need of according to his riches and glory. You just need to get yourself into a situation of bigger need. It's about time. It's about time. Let me just tell you. When you begin to be faithful with the things of God and nothing can get in the way. Listen, if a flat tire is going to keep you from being faithful to God, you're going to have a flat tire before you come to church. If a headache is going to keep you from being faithful to God, you're going to have a headache every time. God demands faithfulness to be established in your life as much as he has to demands anything else about his character. And I want in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth for every one of you to begin to step into a living, viable relationship as it's defined by God and not by man. And you and I are the category of man. If there's any man of God that you can come and, and present your life to and they say, look, you know, you're living your own life. That's you. You, want to, you need to change right there. Because that's the same as God saying it. Otherwise, you just self-justify yourself and you live, your, you live in your own illusions. Because no man of God is going to tell you anything but by the truth, but by, by the spirit of truth. And we up here, we preaching, we declaring these things for the purpose of your changing. For the church purposes of you knowing how to draw out the wealth. And draw out of the things of the Spirit. And draw out of the heavenly blessings. To where you can walk in whatever you need. If it's physical healing for your body or someone else's body, it's already there. You need to learn how to draw it out. Draw it out from relationship because that's the only place faith is developed. If you self-justify something, you'll never have what God has supplied. If you find yourself in financial need, to draw it out by the miracle of the Spirit. If you find yourself in a situation where there needs to be a miracle, you draw it out by the Spirit. The Lord started a miracle in Faith's life the other night. While we were all praying over her, I felt the miracle begin. And the next morning, there was testimony to the miracle. But there, the development of that miracle, as I told them, it has to be worked. It has to be drawn out. Imagine if you're not going to be, you've got to how the need, the necessity to be around people that are speaking the word of God. And demanding what God demands. Father's not going to change the word. So it can line up with your experience. We gonna, I'm going to condemn your experience if it isn't in line with God. You were listening to me. I'm going to condemn my experience. And any other experience. Because what we want is heaven. What we want is what Father demands of us. We've asked God to come rule over us. We want the blessings and the goodness of the life. He supplied. Hallelujah. 
Woo! Hey, the, the healing anointing's here. The delivering anointing is here. I mean, that thing got out of my throat. Praise God. It'll try to shut us down, you know. Stuff like that, just try to shut us down. Uh-uh. Well, you can't shut somebody down who won't be shut down. If I got a flat tire, I wore the, I, I, I ran on the rim. I made it. My mom said, you go hell or high water. If it's high water, swim. If it's hell, run through it. But whatever you committed to God, you be faithful. I don't want people to be praying for me and come late. I don't want people being leading in worship and come late. You're not even in the spirit of it. Then I'm supposed to be happy about you coming late? Come, give me a break. Offer that to your boss, see what he tells you. He's going to tell you, fired. Oh, but we can just give God whatever we have left over? Nonsense. Huh? Come on. People, it's time to learn how to be faithful. It's terrible when somebody commits to cleaning the restrooms and they don't get cleaned. It's terrible on several levels. Because if they would have just told us that they weren't going to do it, somebody else could have done it. We wouldn't have had to put up with that stench, and that nastiness. So it's that one, it's on level, several levels. That's what I mean. You have to learn to be faithful. You have to learn how to put God first, because you're not going to have anything more that you got right now until you get past you, or whatever's hindering you. You got to. Father wants to teach you. To run through the troop, leap over a wall. He wants to teach your hands to work so that a bow still is broken with your arm. He wants to show you how to have total dominion and authority over all the powers of darkness. That's born out of relationship. Doesn't matter how much you love Jesus. Until you get faithful with the relationship, you're not going to have any more than what you have right now. Because I tell you right now, I can take you out to fourth and F Street, and I can show you alcoholics and drug addicts all over the place, tell you how much they love Jesus, and tell you how faithful God has been to them, and quote all kinds of scriptures to you, and then ask you for a few more dollars so they can go get another bottle of cheap wine. Are you listening to me? Yes. I've, been through the, I've, been through the, I've been through the drill. You know what I believe? I believe what God said in His Word. And I, I demand to see the proof of it in my life, to have it in my life, I'm not no short cutter, short changer, shucker and jiber, huh? Ducker and diver. I'm like, Let's come on now. We we don't have what God demands. That means you're under the rule. You have what God demands. Sorry, but God demands you. No, I'm not sorry. God demands you to be joyful. Well, I'm. Somebody said, well, you know, I'm just not coming to church there anymore. And I said, well, 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 what's wrong? Well, you'd expect us to be happy all the time. You give no place to suffering. <laughs> Bubba, you can suffer all you want, but you should be joyful while you're suffering. Because if, you, if it's suffering for Christ, you're going to be... You're gonna be, you're gonna be Seeingly glad in all your suffering. Hallelujah. I just want you to have the God experience, not the devil one. I want you to have the one God describes in his word, not the one you described in your mind. You listen to me. I want God's word to burn in you like a fire. I want it to beat you like a hammer. Amen. I want to smash this. I want it to smash every rock. God said, Don't sow good seed among stones. Dip. It says, till up the fallow ground. Yeah. Sow to yourself, so to yourself, so to yourself in righteousness and what you're going to reap. Mercy. That's right. Sow not good seeds among thorns. Thorns are the cares of this word. God, world. God told me to pluck up. Oh, I'm tired of being over there. He's just plucking up all the time. Angry preacher. I'm tired of being over there. He just puts the, he just, just sticks the disc right down into the ground of my life and begins to tear up the ground of my life. It 
Seed can't go into fallow ground. It's too hard. It's too hard. I tried. Everybody told me that it wouldn't work. And then they come along and said, oh, just use no-till drill. Yeah, that no-till drill better be working properly. Otherwise, it's the same as sowing seed on fallow ground. And not one seed comes up. And I got a no-till drill that didn't work properly. So, you're just going to have to recognize that you don't know what's going on if you got a problem with what I'm doing. I'm blading you so that you can be seated. said take out the stones make smooth the road make straight the paths I'm gonna do it I'm gonna stand here and do it I'm gonna do it with general declarations and those of you who need it the most you can slap the hardest praise God and I hope that you have a righteous sort that says let the righteous smite me it feels good It'd be a strength to me and health to me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. See, I just breathed out a little joy for anybody who knows how to receive it. We're just breathing out a little bit of Holy Ghost. Just get so filled up with God and there won't be room for anything else. You're so filled with the light and you won't notice the darkness. Amen. <laughs> now I'm willing to pray for everybody who didn't like what I just said. Anybody who didn't like what I just said, I'm willing to pray for you. And believe God with you that you come under the rule. I command sickness and disease go out of this place. Satan, you have no right. We destroy your work. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that every person in this place will come to a recognition of a living faith that will grow and increase. A relationship that will become so amazing, so dynamic that it fulfills everything, expresses everything you described in your word. And that every person in this place will believe it tonight. And tomorrow they'll begin to put it into place in their life. They'll simply ask of you, Holy Spirit, fill me. Holy Spirit strengthen me. Holy Spirit rule over me. Teach me how to be led by you. Walk with you. Begin to stand before your presence with praise and thanksgiving until that wonderful glory realm of heaven touches their soul. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh yeah, I want you to find that personal time with the Lord. Oh yeah. I want you to find that personal relationship with the Lord. Because I'm telling you, all that you have need of for your spirit, soul, and body will be supplied in that place. Hallelujah.
Listen, I, I just want you to understand. I want you to understand. Are you blessed? Are you blessed by this by what the music that the Lord's given Joshua? But listen to me. He'll wait, he'll be doing that before we get to the meeting. He'll be he'll be going through things. He's given himself to the ministry. You know, he, he's getting ready to do his, his exams. It's qualifying exams for his doctorate. You know, he's just telling me that I just Wednesday to shut everything down just to give myself to just worshiping. Praise him. People, you can't just walk in here and give us whatever you got and expect that's quality. You're going to have to be prepared by the Lord. Now, I want to get it to you. You think I just come in here and walk? I'm not going to ask her how many of you are blessed by what I, how I ministry. I, but you think I just walk? I know Ann is. But you think I just walk in here and just give you whatever I got? I wait on the word. I wait on the things of the spirit. I wait on the gifting. It's going to be quality. It's going to be that of God. Now, what if you begin to do that? If you begin to take your responsibility as a son and daughter of the Most High to flow and function in the spirit. To have that which God demands of those who participate with his body. You have to write down, do I function as a member in the body of Christ? Not by your own description, but by what God describes in his word. Uh-oh. I see why so many people already left. You understand what I'm saying? But you still here. The wind wasn't able to drive you away. Wind can only drive the chaff away. The wheat falls to the ground, stays. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. You need to write these things down. You need to give yourself to the ministry. I know what I'm going to do when I get here. I'm going to preach, prophesy. I'm going to flow in knowledge and revelation. What are you going to do when you get here? You have to decide. Because without faith, nothing's going to happen. Without you knowing what you're supposed to do and giving yourself to doing it, nothing's going to happen. Is that so hard to understand? But if you give yourself to say, I'm going to start flowing in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to start, I'm going to start, I'm going to, I'm going to give myself to flowing in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to show up happy. That's a good place to start. Hey, man, two hands for beginners. I can't help it. You've been around 30 years and haven't gotten that yet. You may still be a beginner after 30 years, 50 years, 100 years. No time like the present to get underway. I'm going to be joyful in the house of the Lord as God has commanded in so many hundreds of scriptures. And yet people just 100% deny that. I don't know why. I'm going to give myself to prophesy and thanksgiving. Somebody said, I didn't know the song. You can make one up. Just hope you got a good voice. If you don't, just say it in words. Rap it. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. I worship you, almighty God. It's better to rap it. You know what I'm saying? If you got a beautiful voice, belt it out. If you don't, that's not your gifting. That is not going to be a blessing. Now, I'm not saying the Lord can't work a miracle and give you a new set of pipes. But you're going to have to grow in that faith. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm gonna tell you, I don't believe that I don't believe that Evangelist Tim Hall's ever preached the sermon that he preached here on Wednesday night, and the message was for you. It wasn't just for you to come and listen to someone who has an eloquent speech who knows the word of God well who has the voice of one who sings well or plays one who plays the instrument well God's talking to you and he's saying do it 
It's about time you start hearing God's word and you take it personal and start doing it. Instead of walking out saying, yeah, I thought that was a good meeting. Praise God, oh, we had a good meeting. We, we did. How much did you change? How much, you had a good meeting. That means that you've got a whole bunch of assignments of the things you were doing right that you, now, that you were doing wrong that you now got to start doing right. That's a good meeting. You got empowered, you know you got empowered by the Holy Ghost to do it right. That's a good meeting. Good meeting's not what you agree with necessarily. Right, can you understand what I'm saying or must I speak in another language? You must do it. You must give yourself to doing it. To say, look, you know what? I'm going to seize these things. I'm going to seize it. When I hear the word of God, when I hear the word of God go forth, I latch on to it. You know why? Because I want to hear him talk more. I'm not going to let his word fall to the ground. I'm going to grab it. Okay, Father, you just spoke something to me. I could, I could look around and go, yeah, you guys need to get this. That's not what happens. Lord, you spoke something to me. I want to hear. I want to grab this. I want to lay hold on it. I want to have all that you've made available. He's telling us this. You're going to have to lay aside things. You're going to have to reprioritize things. You're going to have to learn how to respond different. If the way I started talking shuts you down, understand there's a problem in your spirit. And that problem is being exemplified as that which stops you and hinders you. Because the light makes manifest. You get to say, well, I had a dad that hollered at me. And as soon as I hear the preacher start hollering, and I just feel like. Or I had a mom that hollered at me. And as soon as I hear the preacher start hollering, I'm reminded of my mom. Do you know how many times I hear that? You know how many times I've heard that? Do you know how common this is to everybody? Everybody's got a dad that hollered at them. And made them feel like they couldn't do anything right. Everybody. Even those who it's not true. It's make-believe. I heard a person say on the news the other day, everybody comes from a dysfunctional family. If you say that you're, you don't, you are... Uh, either a liar or extremely naive. You know what I thought? You need to come visit my family. You need to come visit anybody's family who's baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And there's nothing dysfunctional about the house of God. We don't have, we don't have children that have a problem coming home. We don't have children that have a, that, that have a problem being submitted to their parents. Huh? We don't have children have to work through all kinds of sense of abuse. And if you if you respond to abuse, there's something in your spirit that needs to be healed. If you superimpose the abuse you went through on the voice of God, the Holy Ghost, something in your spirit needs to be healed. Because God's gonna holler at you. Praise God. Well, he spoke to the still small voice to Elijah. You're not Elijah. I can show you many, many times that Jesus started yelling. Started lifting up his voice and hollering at people. Just get healed. It's what's stopping you. It's what's holding you back. It's what shuts you down. Get healed. Well, I need to go through a counseling process. No, you need to repent. Because you're blaming something on someone else that's actually your problem. It's the unforgiveness in your heart, not the problem that somebody gave against, did some act that someone did against you. You know, when I'm taking people through counseling, if you've ever gone through this with me and you got a problem with somebody, what I do is I work on you to see all that you did wrong. Because as soon as you can begin to deal with the reality of everything that you did wrong, the other person isn't so bad anymore. It makes a whole lot easier for you to forgive them. Hello. Unforgiveness is all your fault, 100%. God will hold you accountable for it and nobody else. We got that here tonight. Do you know that it has been identified by all the men of God as the number one thing that holds people back from moving forward in this glory divine? 
then why don't we get over it? It's not that hard to forgive. My goodness. It, it can't be that big of a deal. Right? Well, they hurt me. Wow, big deal. Oh, they didn't honor me. Whoopie doo, as they used to say. Big deal. It doesn't even matter. Self-importance will shut you down, man. That's all self-importance. They didn't treat me right. That's everyday occurrence. Who's been treating you right? If they didn't treat you right, tell me who's been treating you right? You met your standards. If you think about it a little bit more, you go, by the way, nobody. Just that one stood out to you a little bit more. But you know what happens? You know what happens? We're stuck in this thing. It's hard for me to forgive. I'm just having a, you don't know, you don't know what I've been through. Yeah, I, yeah, I do. Because we've all been through the same thing. There's no situation that's unique, really. It's, no temptation happens except for what's common to man. Here's what you do. Lord, fill me with your love. And as you begin to be filled with his love, mercy supplied. And when you have mercy, you have forgiveness. If you can't forgive, it's because you don't have mercy. If you don't have mercy, it's because you're not functioning in God's love. And you got a problem. And we want to fix that for you because we're experts tonight. God has given us the ability to fix that for you. I just want you to get healed. I don't want anybody leaving here not healed. Because there's too many folks to constantly prolong this thing. You just, you have to understand, I get, I get this download, of the, I'm getting, I get these downloads of the word of knowledge, I get this download of what's going on, and then it's, it's just, because I stand in this place with it, and I really, I, I don't want to deal with the, I don't want to deal with the fantastic, I want to deal with the things that are real and important, I want to deal with the problems and the issues. Yeah, I could just focus on everybody that's doing well and leave everybody who's doing bad off in the zone of bad. And don't know how to get out of bad. And some people tell me it's best to do it that way. Because all you do is you end up pulling on people that don't want to change. Well, I'm going to pull. I'm going to wrestle you to the ground. By the help and the grace of the Lord, we're going to pull. I'm going to do everything I can do. We're going to do everything I, we can do to help you. Take a hold of all that God supplied for you. But at the end of the day, at the end of tonight, at the beginning of tomorrow, it's about your will. It's about what you're going to believe, what you're going to be dedicated to. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you'll believe everything that God said in his word. And that you'll be dedicated to having all that he's provided. It's not God's fault. The fault lies with us. He's faultless. All we got to do is begin to believe his word. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Well, find a bunch of people, hug them, tell them that you love them, bless them in this place. Listen, I want you to always be, I, I, I don't want to have to tell you and remind you every time. I want you to already know it. Always come prepared to worship the Lord with something. If you don't have anything, then... Bring a penny. Borrow something from somebody. Tell them you'll pay them back in the millennial reign of Christ. Love you. Sukara masiti salaman and say. Be filled with the Spirit. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Start thinking differently about it all. Set up bounds and limits according to those things which God has described. Place restrictions upon your life. Be no longer your own person. Be the property of God. Give Him all the rights to everything about you.
Whatever request you make of God, He's going to do it. I said whatever request you make of God that you're willing to believe it, He's going to do it. Whatever request you make of God, He's going to do it. Sometimes we have to stand and fight a battle, as it were. Sometimes it seems there's a lot of things saying, no, it's not true, it didn't happen, you didn't receive, you didn't get it. But if you're unwilling to be moved, if having done all to stand, you continue to stand, all oh, faith will grow. The provision of God will become all that you know. Because that's his father's promised. He's determined that you receive it because that's which he's commanded. Hallelujah. He, he, sutolia, sabaladea. He shall also supply. Just believe it. There's a miracle for you. Just believe it. There's the power to overcome. There's the overcoming power in the house. The overcoming power is here in the house. The over the power of the overcomers here in the house. Discovering the one who's greater than all that is in the world. Discovering that he's on the inside of you. That greater is he that is in you. Discovering that he's actually in you. Where everyone can see and understand who knows God. Who's come to know God. That Christ Jesus is truly greater. Than all that is in the world. But many have not begun to believe. That he lives and abides and dwells on the inside of them. To where that that authority, that overcoming power, the greater one, is a part of their decisions, part of their actions, part of their very being. The greater one is a part of my very being. I want you to start saying it. The greater one is a part of my very being. Take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is your own, and it shall be your royal throne. Consecration to him. Right now in Jesus' name. Fire of God. I believe there's nothing more important than spirit, wisdom, and revelation. Spirit, wisdom, and revelation will cause you to know and understand for sure that the greater one is on the inside of you. Oh, what faith begins to work. Oh, what faith begins to work when the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is a living reality, an active agent and power on the inside of you. He shall make alive your mortal body. Oh, the power of God begins to work when people know that they're the temple of the Holy Ghost, that Christ Jesus dwells in them. Father, thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the wellspring springing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Zaramanda deosta, balakina manda leos te pei, manda leos si para namrosai, bafra te si carne. In the name of Jesus, power, strength, fortitude, to stand against all sickness and disease, not to lay down to it, not to run over to the doctor because you got a little spot on you, not to come under that authority of fear. Build up, build up the supply of the Holy Ghost. It produces miracle faith. Out of 
of your belly flows rivers of the Holy Ghost. How does that happen? Because you yield. How do you yield? Because you there in expectation. That's that activation. That flowing forth of heaven is that declaration of being strengthened by the Spirit in your inner being. So let the river flow. Let the outpouring of the Holy Ghost be a reality continually. Let Him be the supply of the strength that you need. Let Him be your ability to overcome, to do what's right. To praise Him and to worship Him no matter what happens. So that there is no evil reports that you receive, but all of them are good reports. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You said, Lord, lead me and guide me, and that's exactly what he's going to do. You might not like where he led you. You might have said, oh, God, let your fire burn. God, let your fire fall on me. And then you might not really like what's happening when the fire starts burning and falling. Because the fire starts taking care of starts exposing, starts dealing with anything that's not of the Lord, that has to be changed. Sometimes we stare our worst nightmare in the face or we stare our problems in the face and we don't know what to do with it. And the Lord just simply says, call upon me, I'll deliver you. The Lord just simply asks you to change. He asks you to step up into another realm of faith that he himself supplies. He's amazing. Now I command a blessing on you, Dwayne Lindstrom of God. I command a blessing on you. Amen. Father, we thank you for a blessing upon his house. Examine the interaction. Make some unnecessary adjustments if needed. I ask, Father, for you to give the spirit of wisdom and revelation here so that Jason can recognize that you're on the inside of him in a greater way. Amen. Can you imagine how long-suffering the Lord is with you? Can you imagine how patient He is with you? Somebody said, how can you be long, so long-suffering and patient? I said to him, look, the Lord has been so long-suffering and patient with me. It's easy. It's easy. He's amazingly long-suffering and patient. While we stand around, still don't get it after such a long time as this. He's just like, okay, would you get it now? We just go ahead and receive now. Father has supply for you. Did you know that there's nothing that comes down out of heaven that you can have just because you want it? Everything that comes out of heaven you can have because of faith that hooks up to receive it. Oh, I want it. God isn't going to respond because you want it. He's going to respond because you're willing to step into the faith to receive it. My wife has this little sign. Faith sees the impossible. 
believes the incredible and receives the impossible or the miraculous. She's not here right now, so I can't tell her. Where's she at? Oh. I'm looking for her over there. Oh, he's faith sees the invisible, believes the incredible, and receives the impossible. And where does all of that come from? The Word. The Word of God tells us amazing things about ourselves. But are we going to move into the faith of it? Faith is moving beyond the belief. Faith is the activity of it. The Word of God mixed with faith is what profits you. Otherwise, you're just on hold. You're just on hold. I lay hands on people all the time. I can feel it. They're just on hold. They're just bound up by all their issues and problems and stuff. It's not faith. Faith, I don't care where you're at. Faith will connect with the power of God if you were in prison and you had a bunch of demons all around you. No one lay hands on you. Faith will connect. What happens when you've got an anointed person of God who has been gifted to give that which he's freely received? When faith hooks up, you can draw on it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the miracle of change. Father, we thank you for the willingness, Lord God, to reach out to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I ask you, in your mercy, in your grace, move this life past everything that has captivated him in the world. May begin to behold something far better that you've made available to him for the asking. So easy to receive all that Father has, no matter where you're at. From the beginning to the end, just so long as you're willing to believe what he says and begin to move in faith, you can have it. It's yours right now. Sometimes there's a lot of situations, a lot of hindrances come out against us. Stop us, a lot of opposing circumstances. But if we just stand up, hold fast to the Word of God, we'll bust right through it. If I'd have laid down the way I felt last night, I think I would have died. know what I'm saying. No, it's just I haven't had to deal with any kind of sickness, fever, anything hitting my body for a very, very long time. Thing come at me out of nowhere. Of course, I'm tired and run down. That doesn't mean we'd lay down to it. We'd run the thing off. we stand up. It's not a place where doubt could work. Father wants to take you there. There's a place where no doubt could no unbelief will be able to sway you. Don't you want to live there? Don't you want to live there? Why don't you just live there? Father really wants you to live there. All you have to do is be willing. You know what the biggest thing you got to move past to have this? You know what the biggest thing is? Self. It's the hardest lesson for everybody to learn because most people can't recognize self. It's, it's probably one of the greatest signs of the first stages of maturity in God to be able to recognize yourself and to deny it. Say, you're not going to sway me. You're not going to move me. I've got it. I have this unquenchable thirst for the living God. I've got this ravenous hunger. 
Father, we thank you for this amazing miracle. We thank you for this Holy Ghost woman who's already prophesying and giving words of knowledge. Father, we thank you that you strengthen her in faith and confidence and boldness. She walks in all every dimension all your fullness in Jesus name filled filled to overflowing filled to overflowing Find a bunch of people, hug them, tell them that you love them, bless them in Jesus' name.